George and Tony. <laughs>
To prepare for this, tripping in the world could be dangerous. Everybody circling his vultures, negative, nepotist. Everybody waiting for the fall of man. Everybody praying for the end of times. Everybody hoping they could be the one. I was born to run, I was born for this. Whip, whip. New music discovery. Future generations, all the same. Parker Millsap, let a little light in. Two feet hurt people. Radio Dixie 91.3. This is new music discovery.
Radio Dixie 91.3 is broadcasting live. What's up, everybody? It's DJ Martin here with you. We are at the Dixie State Trailblazer tailgate. We are here also giving away prizes and toys and all that kind of crazy fun stuff here with our little tent. Uh, well, the game is going to be at 6 o'clock, Fort Lewis versus Dixie State. Come on down. There's games, there's prizes, there's food, there's all kinds of fun. We're having a lot of fun here. Check us out here at Radio Dixie 91.3. Hi, my name's Mariah Richens. I'm from Ogden, Utah, and I'm a biology major going into pre-medicine. This is Radio Dixie 91.3. We promise to only play the best music. Radio Dixie 91.3. Everybody has a secret. Real pain that they all conceal Maybe mine is contagious With time it can make you feel Like a fate, like a failure All I wanted was a brand new start I never needed to remember When the truth can break your heart Ooh, now I got it all out It's all on the floor
www.radiodixie913.com. Dancing on the crumbling precipice The rocks are coming loose to set the earth Are we laughing? Are we crying? Are we drowning? Are we dead? Or is it all a dream? Hey guys, come on down to the Dixie State Trailblazer tailgate. It's just about wrapping up here. They got prizes, food, games for all ages. They got cornhole. They got a bouncy house for the kids. They got Jimmy John's. Radio Dixie's down here. We're giving away prizes and all that stuff. After the game, stick around. They have movies in the stadium. Remember, the Titans is the movie tonight. Stick around for that. It's going to be a fun one. And don't forget about the football game, Dixie State versus Fort Lewis. First 2,000 fans who come into the stadium get a free red T-shirt and get to see the new new grandstands on the east side of the stadium. Radio Dixie, 91.3. Radio Dixie 91.3. Hi, this is Bob Patterson. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday morning from 9 to 11, we get in your ears with the best music of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You're invited to join us in the Trailblazer Radio Cafe. We'll save you a booth by the window, okay? Radio Dixie 91.3 FM.
Radio Dixie 913. New, New music, music discovery. Future generations. All the same. Parker Millsap. Let a little light in. Two feet. Hurt people. Stuck on these visions. Hurt people just hurt people. Radio Dixie 91.3. This is New Music Discovery. Radio Dixie 91.3. Welcome to Dixie State University Athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3 KXDS Santa Clara. DSU Athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3 is brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln, your neighborhood Ford dealer. We hear you. And now it's time for DSU Athletics. Welcome to the studio of Radio Dixie. We are here live in the studio, the beautiful studio on Radio Dixie on the campus of Dixie State University for the game between the Trailblazers of Dixie State and the Jayhawks of Fort Lewis. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Martin Kelly. I'll be here with you in the pregame, the halftime, and the postgame show. We're going to wrap them all up after that. We're going to take a 30-second time out here, and we're going to talk about what happened between Dixie State and Fort Lewis last week and what this is going to look like this week. 
You're listening to Dixie State Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln at 145 West Hilton Drive in St. George and at stgeorgeford.com. Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln, your neighborhood Ford dealer and the title sponsor for all DSU athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3. Cool! <laughs> there are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return to you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to the studio. We just had to take a 30-second time out to get station notification and other stuff like that. Let's get right into it. Dixie State lost last week to set Cal- Colorado State Pueblo 56-14 and the Jayhawks of Fort Lewis lost to New Mexico Highlands 45-31. to So both teams are looking to jump back into the regular standings with a win and try to get even on the record this season. Will Dixie State look to bounce back from last week? I think they can. they got to eliminate some big plays, win the turnover battle, and not try to give up so much room on the defensive side. Be a little more strong on the defensive side. Offensively, they got to be a little more timed. They weren't doing that last week. The run game has to get started. The offensive line's got to get a push. And on that, with Jayhawks of Fort Lewis, they got to do the same things on the defensive side. They got to limit the turnovers. They got to do things to make sure that the ball is in their hands. They are scoring every time. They're trying to put points on the board. And they got to get a little tougher on defense, too. They gave up 45 points in New Mexico Highland last week after a try to come back in the game, 45-31. to 31. We will see if they do that here. We're going to take another quick break here, and we'll be right back with more of the Trailblazer pregame show. Hi, I'm Dustin Lynch. You don't have to listen to country music to know that life can be full of drama. Some of it you just can't control, like your girlfriend running out on you with your best friend. But there's some drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. You just need to take that first step and find free classes near you and start moving towards a brighter future and even your college degree. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Hi, I'm Matt Kenseth. You don't have to be a race car driver to know that life can be full of drama. Some of it you can't control, like mechanical issues, high winds, and rain delays. But there's some drama you can skip. Skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency. Find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma. Visit finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. You just need to take that first step and find free classes near you and leave the drama for the racetrack. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ed Council. Russell Wilson here. With Play 60, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play at least 60 minutes a day. Healthy kids! To get involved, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Donate! Are you guys going to do that every time? Yes, of course! Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. You're listening to Dixie State Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln at 145 West Hilton Drive in St. George and at stgeorgeford.com. Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln, your neighborhood Ford dealer and the title sponsor for all DSU athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3. Hi, this is Terry Crews, actor, former football player, and father of five. I'm also an expert on drama. There's a good kind that comes with having a house full of kids and there's silly drama like the drama around my percolating pectorals. And then there's the drama you can skip skip the drama that comes with not having your high school diploma or equivalency find free adult education classes near you and finish your diploma visit finishyourdiploma.org that's finishyourdiploma.org and lead the drama to actors like me brought to you by the dollar general literacy foundation and the ed council it's back to the action for dsu athletics brought to you by ken garf st george ford lincoln we now return to you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to the Trailblazer pregame show. I am your it's host, Martin Kelly, here the with Athletics. the pregame show right before I kick off. We're going to send it to my man, Carrick Segler, Segmiller, in a few minutes here on Radio Dixie 91 Point. He will have the call for the game this week. But right now, I'm going to give you my pick. I'm going to take the Trailblazers. I took the Trailblazers last week. I thought they were going to get a good upset in Colorado State Pueblo, but that didn't happen my way. But I think this week, I think the Trailblazers are so much a better team. They can run the ball better. They can pound the ball better. If they can get the passing game going, I think this team can win this game defensively. They just have to get into the middle and stop the run game, force this team to throw the ball, force them into uncovered to force them into in being uncomfortable, and I think this team is going to win this football game here on Radio Dix. We're going to take a couple. We're going to take a timeout here, and then we're going to send it out to my man, Kerry Segmiller. I'm in almost every school bus and classroom. I go to school with your children. We say the Pledge of Allegiance together. 
you see me around the neighborhood and you tell me that I'm a pretty good kid. Well, I'm one out of every five children in America, and I'm struggling with hunger. This problem is closer than you think. My teacher tells me we can grow up to be whatever we want. I want to grow up to be someone who doesn't go to bed hungry. There's enough food in this country to feed everybody. Please visit feedingamerica.org today and find your local food bank for ways to help. Every dollar you donate helps provide eight meals for kids like me, quietly struggling with hunger. Together, we are Feeding America, brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. My name is Dale Pazinski. I volunteer with United Way to help the homeless in my community learn computer skills and build a basic resume. I don't just wear this shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Whoa! There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. You're listening to Dixie State Athletics. Brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln. At 145 West Hilton Drive in St. George and at stgeorgeford.com. Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln, your neighborhood Ford dealer. And the title sponsor for all DSU athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3. My name is Mira. Many families have come to America for a better life. I advocate for these families with United Way to make the community stronger. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics. Brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Thank you for tuning in to the Dixie State Trailblazer pregame show. We're going to send it out to my man, Carrick Seg Miller, here live in the studio for you guys with the broadcast of the Trailblazers versus Dixie State and the Jayhawks of Fort Lewis. Enjoy the football game. Welcome back to Trailblazer Stadium, National Anthem in the books. We are just minutes away from football inside Trailblazer Stadium. Dixie State of Fort Lewis getting set to do battle in an RMAC battle. Both teams 0-1 coming into tonight's game. One team will leave with a win. The other will return home tonight with an 0-2 record and left to try to figure things out the rest of the way. The journey to turn the season around begins now. As we get set for the coin toss, we'll let you know who wins that coin toss. A great crowd on hand here at Trailblazer Stadium. The Stampede student section is on hand. They have filled their section to capacity. The community members feeling the seats in as well. A pretty good contingent over on the new east side. It's kind of sunny to sit in there uh, here at the 6 o'clock start. But by halftime, the sun will dip down behind the press box here on the west side, and it will be all good over there on the east side as well. Dixie State, Fort Lewis getting set to do battle inside Trailblazer Stadium. While we've got a minute, let's remind you of the Armac schedule tonight. A couple of games in the books already. South Dakota Mines with a 38-21 win over Western State. We'll recap these at halftime as well. In fact, you know what? Why don't we let you listen in to the it point toss? It is tails. Four loose. You've won the ball. The toss. Receive. Which way do you want to kick, Dixie? Okay. Going to switch sides. Four Lewis has won the toss, and we're receiving this direction. Gentlemen, shake hands. 
So there you go. I did not know we were going to, I knew we had the ref audio tonight. I did not know he was going to get on the mic and uh, deliver the message for us. But there you hear it from a referee tonight, Jeff Reed, our referees tonight, Jeff Reed, Craig Mitchell, Scott Taylor, Joel Bingham, Jonathan Braun, Dave Wallace, and Aaron Olivares on the referee crew tonight. Fort Lewis winning the toss. They elect to receive. Dixie State will be kicking off to the north. That will be right to left across your screen. And we are back. It's the full triple cast. We are on radio. We are on TV. And we are on the World Wide Web. Dixie State of football coming at you. Let's give you those RMAC scores that we were talking about across the conference. South Dakota Mines, their offense has looked really good. They gave a nationally ranked Colorado Mesa team a run for its money last week, just falling by three. They defeat Western State today, 38-21. And how about this? New Mexico Highlands puts up 65 points. That is the Trailblazers' week three opponent. We'll have them here next week in St. George. 65-37 blowout win for the Cowboys over Adams State. Colorado School Mines, the Ore Diggers with a 42-20 to win over Black Hills State. We've got our game here, Dixie State and Fort Lewis. Shadron State traveling to Pueblo to take on Colorado State Pueblo. That will be a dandy of a game. The Eagles and Thunderwolves look really good so far honors. this season. That game kicks Dixie at State, and then Fort Colorado Lewis, 15 Mesa minutes on the clock. Pre-game show in the books. Now the important part, let's play football. Carrick Segment with you at Trailblazer Stadium. Jurgensen puts the right foot into this one, end over end kick into the end zone. Norman will take it five yards deep. He's going to bring it out to the five, the 10, cutting back outside of the 15. He's hit and met, driven backwards at the 15-yard line. Probably should have kept that one in the end zone, but he opts to bring it out, and good defending by the Trailblazers. Fort Lewis will start at its own 15-yard line. And how about offensively the starters for this Fort Lewis squad? It all starts with quarterback Jake Lowry under center. Your tailback is Braden Lucero across the front. Joseph Townsell, Brandon Reed, Josh Howell, Jeffrey Brinkley, and Kyle Mudick. Your receivers are Aurelius Hughes, tight end Sam Kohlberg, other receiver Mason Hatton, and Tejon Mondi Smith. Well, here we go, Fort Lewis. Two receivers to the near side. Lucero at the right hip of Lowry in the shotgun. On first down, flags fly. The forward play can get, even get underway. Ten. Five-yard penalty. First down. They're going to say delay of game as the play clock had hit zero. Clock to 14.54. Referee asking 14.54 to be on the game clock. Oh, now we've got trouble. It's reading 145. Now they may have to stop things. First down play goes to Lucero, and he is stopped, and they get the time right. Lucero, short gain of one yard. It'll be second down and nine. Excuse me, second down and 14 after the five-yard delay of game penalty. Lucero tried to go off tackle the right. He was forced back inside. Remington Kelly wrapping his arms around him, making the tackle. Second down and 14 for the Skyhawks. Pistol formation. They give the Lucero again. He's met, driven back in the backfield. What a play by Dixie State. Sebastian DiMartini, the first one to get to him. Anthony Yarbrough was in on the tackle as well. Martini blew that play up. Reinhardt in there as well. What a play by the Dixie State defense. Braden Lucero going nowhere. Two runs for Lucero. And nowhere for him to go on that play. Here we go. Third down and 16. Lowry in the shotgun slips. He's got, oh, he escapes the tackle. Cuts back inside. Still on his feet and he's met and driven to the ground across the 15, diving near the 18-yard line. Pretty good pickup for Lowry, considering it looked like he was going down. But Jalen Moore able to come up and stop him. About eight yards shy of the first down marker. And Fort Lewis forced to punt on its first drive of the game. The punter, Max Peets, six-foot junior. 
out onto the field. He had an extraordinary week last week, punting the ball, averaging over 50 yards a punt. Back deep to receive for the Trailblazers as Pete just gets this one away. Fair catch called for and made at the Dixie State 41-yard line by Aaron Simpson. And that is where Dixie State will start over for the first time today offensively. The Trailblazers start on its own 41-yard line. Starters for Dixie State offensively. As you see, the sophomore quarterback jogging out to lead the troops, Trent Darms. We'll give you a little bit more about him and what he did at Shasta College in a minute. Say Jay Lalongo is your tailback across the front. Brandon Turner, Tevia Tolutau, Dane Hall, Nathan Aceves, and Chris Grasso. On first down, they give to Say Jay. Off tackle to the right. He goes nowhere. No gain. Will be second down and 10. Your receivers are Devin Osborne, Dewan Dantzler, and your tight end is Cody Hobbs. So off tackle for Say Jay to the right side, and he's met and driven back by Isaiah Mayberry. They'll hurry back up to the line, second down and 10. Two receivers to the left arms looking to throw. Fires far side, complete to Cody Hobbs, the tight end, and he is knocked out of bounds by Mayberry. Well, Mayberry's been on both tackles for Fort Lewis. It'll bring up second down, and we'll call it five yards, third down and five, excuse me, on this first drive for the Trailblazers. Third down and five, ball at the Dixie State 46-yard line. Can the Trailblazers get a first down on the first possession of the game? Darms, time to throw. Now pressure comes, evades the defender, loads up, fires as he throws, and it's incomplete. It's not a live ball. He was able to get it out, but pressure came, and Darms has to just get rid of it. Incomplete pass, Dixie State will pass. Well, excuse me, will punt as well. Had plenty of time, but good coverage downfield. Darms just able to get out of the outstretched arms of Joshua Quayler, only to be brought down by Darian Stickney as he was getting rid of the ball. 11.57 to play here in the first quarter. Dixie State, Fort Lewis scoreless. Both defenses looking really good here at this point. Josh Carlson. The new Dixie State punter puts a foot into this one. Angling to the right side, and it will go out of bounds. Where are they going to mark this thing? Across the 20 and down at the 15-yard line. So the same spot that Fort Lewis started their first drive. Josh Carlson had a big-time punt last week. Setting a new Dixie State record in the third quarter at CSU Pueblo. 81-yard punt. For Carlson as he was able to eclipse the previous mark of 78 yards set by Nate Lewis against Humboldt State 2007. Fort Lewis back out on offense. Drop play up the middle, flag flies, and that was not Lucero. That is TJ Telfy. We'll call it a gain of two for the time being. Flag right near the line of scrimmage. We'll wait for Jeff Reed, our official, to make the call. Anytime you see that right where the play went through, can't think of anything but maybe a hold. There is no foul on the play. And they're going to wave it off. No foul on the play. It's a two-yard pickup for Fort Lewis. It'll be second down and eight across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Fort Lewis waiting for the next play to be called again. That's T.J. Telfy out at the right hip of Jake Lowry, the quarterback. Shotgun snap, Lowry, pressure comes. He's going down. What? Wes Moyai. A Red Lion sack for the Trailblazers. Moyai able to break through on that right end, and Lowry had no time. Moyai, the junior out of St. George, Utah, the local kid. Played at Pineview High School. All right, it's time for third down. And after a couple of years, made his way back to St. George. And Dixie. 
Pressure comes. Lowry has to get rid of it. Telfi makes the catch, but he is brought down by Abraham Reinhardt at the five-yard line, and this Dixie State defense is amped up, not giving up anything tonight. And Lowry fills the pressure. Moyai coming off that right end again, and Reinhardt there to bring Telfi down as soon as he makes the catch at the five-yard line. Max Peets will jog back out onto the field for another punt. And these are the punts that make your palms a little bit sweaty when you're the punter. Aaron Simpson waiting at midfield. Pete's the punt out of his own end zone and is blocked. Ball pops straight up, comes down to the 10, takes a Fort Lewis bounce. It's recovered at the 20, and he's tackled across the 20, down to the 15-yard line. And that's Elijah Isaiah coming up with it for the Trailblazers. We'll have to take a look at the replay to see if we can... See who maybe got a hand on that ball. May have been Malaki Malaki. Number was blocked just a little bit. See if we can maybe run that one more time. But Dixie State blocks the punt, recovers it down to the 15, and the Trailblazers in business. Would love to see that block one more time on the TV side if we could. Here it comes once more. The number come. Well, that's the pass to Telfi. We'll get it here in just a minute. Darms brings the offense onto the field. In around. Luago across the 10. 5. Can he get there? He can. He stopped at the 2-yard line. C.J. Luongo, 13-yard run down to the 2-yard line. The Trailblazers in business in the red zone. A fabulous Freddy's first down as Dixie State looking to get on the board first. The Trailblazers humming defensively and now on offense here. Trips to the far side. They give to Luongo again, and he stopped. Nowhere to go. It'll be no gain. Second down and goal from the two for the Trailblazers. It'll be fitting for CJ to get a score early as he had to miss the game last week. Dinged up a little bit during fall camp. And we're Mary Berry in on the tackle for Fort Lewis. Dewan Dantzler spread, split out to the left. Two receivers to the far side. Dantzler in motion now. They'll give it back to Sejay, and he stopped again. He's going to lose yardage. Loses a yard. Third down and goal from the three. They sent Dantzler in motion. Faked the jet sweep around the right end. Gave it to Luongo. It fooled nobody. Especially Cameron. Isaiah Mayberry. He's in on a tackle again. Dixie State third and goal. They're going to mark him back to the four. You think after blocking the punt, you've got to score here. Cannot just settle for a field goal. Darms with Longo motioning out to the left. We'll drop back. Quarterback keeper, he's in for the score. Designed quarterback keeper all the way. Four-yard touchdown run for Trent Darms. His first touchdown in a Dixie State uniform. Beautiful design quarterback keeper, nearly untouched into the end zone. Four yard scamper. The Trailblazers will capitalize on the block punt. We talked about creating big plays, winning the turnover battle, and Dixie State with a 6 0 lead, 8.34 to go here in the first quarter. High snap, Duran pulls it down. Jurgensen kicks it up, and it's through. 8.34 to go here at Trailblazer Stadium. Dixie State a 7 0 lead here in the first quarter in the 2018 home opener. 60 second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Dixie State, as we welcome you back, capitalizing on the block punt. You see the block punt there. A.J. Jurgensen will put a foot into this one. Devontae Norman fielding the kickoff. At the goal line, he's across the 10, across the 15, down to about the 17-yard line. And that is where Fort Lewis will start. But you see Trent Darms making the four-yard touchdown scamper. And Dixie State a 7 nothing lead. Boy, this is the start you wanted if you're Dixie State. Did not maybe move the ball you wanted to on your first offensive possession. But the defense has looked fantastic. On both times they've been on the field, you've forced a turnover, and you've capitalized on it. Now a 7-0 lead for the Trailblazers, 8.28 to play. Lowry will hand off to Telfi. 
Feeling his way off to the left side, and he's stuffed, goes nowhere. Remington Kelly in on the tackle, among others. Remington Kelly also has some help from Lyceni Sewell. Another St. George native. Transferring back down to Dixie State after a year or two away. Second down and 11 for Fort Lewis from its own 16-yard line. Skyhawks with three receivers split out to the near side, including Tejan Mondi. Lowry will load up, fire, open receiver, far side, he dropped it. Wide open was Elijah Huff on the far sideline. Kind of slipped and fell to his knees, still had an opportunity to make the catch, but he dropped it. That would have gone for the first Skyhawk first down of the day, but Huff could not quite haul it in. Third down and 11 for the Skyhawks. We'll get you some Neater's stats here in just a moment. Five receivers, three to the near side, two to the far side, empty backfield, shotgun snap to Lowry on third down and 11. Lowry, pressure comes, forced out to his right. Remington Kelly looks like he was held, fires the pass to Devontae Norman, just out of his outstretched hands and incomplete. Boy, Remington Kelly turning to the official on his way back. You're going to see it here on your screen, and he is held. You saw a big hold on Remington Kelly. May have even got the face mask. No flag thrown. Luckily for Dixie State, did not affect the play as Devontae Norman, Javante Norman, excuse me, could not haul it in. And that pass falls to the turf. Three drives, three punts for Max Peets as he punts from the two-yard line this time. Aaron Simpson standing back in his own 40 three yard line the punt nearly blocked again short punt high will fall to 45 takes a dixie state bounce back to the 50 and is touched and down right at midfield quick look at some stats brought to you by neaters dixie state so far as, never mind, we'll get to those in just a moment. My apologies. Didn't quite have those ready for you. Get them for you in just a moment. Dixie State jogging back out onto the field. 7.28 to go in the first. A 7 nothing lead over Fort Lewis College. Live on TV, radio, and internet. Darms play action on first down. Looking, looking. Fires across the middle. Tipped an incomplete pass intended for Dewan Dantzler. And the pass broken up by Sule Takameatu. Takameatu able to get a hand in there. He had the tight end, Darms did, wide open, about five year, five yards downfield. Kind of already had his mind up where he wanted to go. Second down snap, read option, he'll leave it with CJ. CJ starts outside, cuts back inside and he will drive the legs forward for a two-yard pickup on the far hash. It'll be third down and eight for the Trailblazers. Darms left that one in there as long as he could. Pulled it back out. There's nowhere to go for Seije. Clock rolling, 6.50 to go. Trips to the near side. Seije motions out to the right side. He'll become a receiver. Darms drops back, fakes. Deep downfield, Connor Miller there makes the grab of the 25 and he's down across the 20. Where do they mark him? And he's across the 20 down to the 18 yard line. Big time pass and Connor Miller, he's got blood on the arm. You can see it there. I don't know if they'll make him come off and get cleaned up. In basketball, you'd have to. But Connor Miller, another one of those junior college transfers that's made a big, big impact for Dixie State already, goes up high and gets the pass right on the money from Trent Darms. First down snap to Darms, looking, looking, has time, fires across the middle through the arms of Xavier Smith. A little too much juice on it, but Xavier able to get the hands on it but couldn't quite snare it. Incomplete. In on coverage, Takamiatu again. 
Sule Takamayatu. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm just going off of the pronunciation guide provided by Fort Lewis. Second down and 10. He'll leave it for Lawrence Starks, the freshman. He'll get for his first carry of the game. And it's a good one. Across the 15. Down to the 12-yard line. Pickup of six yards for Starks on a second down. Third down and four into the red zone. Dixie State, one more first down. If they can get the four yards here, don't have to go for the end zone. Devin Osborne, the six foot seven target, is in on the far side. Look for maybe a fade to him. Empty backfield. Shotgun snap to Darms. Two step drop. Has time. Fires across the middle, looking for Osborne. Osborne was kind of making a move to the outside, and Darms misses him. Throws behind him. Fourth down and four from the 12. Dixie State will have to settle for the field goal. If he throws that ball outside, as you see that there on your screen, Osborne kind of making that motion back to Darms. If he throws that back out stride, back outside, Osborne makes the catch in stride and maybe is long enough. He can turn, take a couple of steps and stretch the ball out, get in the end zone. As it is, 29-yard field goal left hash for Jurgensen. The kick is up and it is good. Yergi, good from 29 yards out. Dixie State gets points. It's a 10-0 lead for the Trailblazers. 5.24 to go. Let's take the 60-second timeout. Come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. Welcome back to Trailblazer Stadium. Dixie State points on its last two drives. 5.24 to go in the first. Dixie State a 10-0 lead. Seven-play, 38-yard drive for the Trailblazers. High kick. Fair catch going to be called for and taken on the kickoff at the five-yard line by Javante Norman. New rule this year. Fair catch. Caught within the 25-yard line by the returner. The ball will be placed at the 25-yard line by rule. As you see, our referee, Jeffrey, explained the new rule before I could. New to college football this season. You can call for the fair catch, and anywhere you are, you're lined up at the 25. And Norman is... Tried to bring the last couple of kickoffs out and has been unsuccessful. But this time, probably by coach's orders, takes the fair catch. Great Lucero back into the game for Fort Lewis at tailback. He's at the left hip of Jake Lowry on first down. Mondi Smith and Hatton split out to the right side for the Skyhawks. Handoff to Lucero. He breaks through the line for the first time today. He'll pick up three yards. Biggest pickup of the day. As he was able to break through there. Alex Lilliard, linebacker, coming up, making that stop. As well as Lysene Sewell. Second down. We're going to go read option. Lowry keeps it. Fakes a defender out and picks up the first first down of the game for Fort Lewis. Dixie State had a defender right there as Lowry was going to the outside. But a quick juke will send Cialoe to his seat. And Lowry picks up the first down. Pick up 12 yards for the quarterback. Cialoe was in pursuit and had a beat on Lowry. Just couldn't quite keep up with him. Clock rolling at 4.30 to go. First, first down of the game for the Skyhawks. Lowry loading up, firing deep downfield. Has a man, and the catch is made by Mason Hatton across the 50, down near the 40, across the 42 to the 35-yard line. Big pickup for Fort Lewis. And Hatton was wide open. Mike Jones comes over to help make the stop right at the end but a perfect pass from Jake Lowry and now this Fort Lewis offense is humming on first down read option Lowry is going to keep it and he'll go for a one yard pickup second down and nine as he goes straight up the field clock rolling 350 and counting Abraham Reinhardt in on the stop 25 yard pass from Lowry to Hatton on the previous play. If you're just tuning in, we appreciate you making us part of your day. 
Lowry will flip it out to Norman on the near side. Gets a block. Ball comes loose. It's on the ground, and Hatton dives on it for Fort Lewis. Fumbles this year brought to you by Jimmy Johns. Freaky fast fumbles. That ball poked out of Norman's hands. Dixie State nearly picks it up. But Mason Hatton able to dive on it. Third down and 15, Dixie State. Trying to force a stop here. Big third down, late in the first quarter. 2.50 to go. Lowry has time. Pocket closes. Ball stripped out of his hands. is loose. And I think Dixie State's got it. Dixie State has recovered the fumble. I think Anthony Yarbrough, judging by his reaction, is the one that got in there and stripped the ball. Wes Moyai with the Jimmy Johns fumble recovery. We'll get a look at it here. Lowry loading up for the throw, stripped out of his hands, and it is Anthony Yarbrough forcing the fumble and Wes Moyai coming up with the recovery. Dixie State in business. First down and 10 from its own 43-yard line, second turnover of the game. Darms, slant route inside, complete to Brad Duran. It'll go for a six-yard pickup down to the 49-yard line. It'll be second down and four for Dixie State at its own 49, and we're going hurry up. Two receivers split out to either side. Darms will take the, excuse me, Sage takes a handoff from Darms, breaks through the first level across the 50, down to the 36-yard line of Fort Lewis. A good pickup for Sage Luongo as he goes from the 49 down to the 36-yard line. And he will pick up 15 yards on the play. They go hurry up again. They'll leave it with St. Jay. He goes nowhere, loses two yards. Clock rolling, 2.02 to go in the first. 10-0 Dixie State lead. Trailblazers in Skyhawk territory. St. Jay will jog off the field. Lawrence Starks in at tailback. Darms loses his towel. We'll just flip it out of the way. Referee will pick it up and hold it for him. Trips to the near side. Snap to Darms. Pump fake. Pressure coming. Brought down as he throws. Dantzler can't make the catch. Pressure came from the far side, the blind side, and Darms just didn't see it coming. I thought maybe he was going to get hit before he threw, but he's hit at the feet as he threw. Takes a shot. Christopher Blanton getting in there and helping disrupt that pass. Third down and 11 coming up for the Trailblazers. So far on the day, Darms three for 11, 41 yards through the air. Third down and 11, shotgun snap to Darms. Looking, loads up, going for the end zone. And it's a touchdown pass, no, he dropped it. Devin Osborne looked like he had made the catch in the end zone but the pass is broken up by Cam Theory. He's that six foot seven target. Gets it, and then it's knocked out of his hands by Cam Theory. And you're kind of in no man's land for Dixie State. Ball sitting at the 37 yard line. So it would be a 54 yard field goal from this point, the Dixie State going to keep the offense on the field at 4th down and 11. And now a flag going to fly. Delay of game. 11, offense. 5-yard penalty, 4th down. Dixie State going to take the delay of game penalty and then bring Josh Carlson of the punting unit back out on the field. Take a Quick look at some Jimmy Johns, excuse me, not Jimmy Johns, Neater's stats for you. As this punt gets setting, getting set. 41 yards of total offense for Dixie State. 13 yards, excuse me, that's passing yards. I don't know how to read my screen. And now a whistle and another delay of game penalty. Number 39, offense. Five-year penalty, still fourth down. Dixie State trying to get itself some room to punt. That's good. Gives us time for some Neater's stats. 
I've now learned how to read my screen and know what I'm looking at. 78 yards of total offense for Dixie State. 28 yards of total offense for the Skyhawks. Give you a couple more numbers here in just a minute. Carlson, end over end kick, is going to go five yards deep into the end zone. It'll be a touchback out to the 20 for Fort Lewis. So needed to take one or two more delay of game penalties. Carlson's just got a big foot. And he's just a freshman. And this kid is going to be phenomenal for Dixie State. Let's break down those stats even fur- further for you. Three first downs for Dixie State. Two for Fort Lewis. 37 yards on the ground for Dixie State against 15 for Fort Lewis. Dixie State, 41 yards through the air. 13 yards through the air for Fort Lewis. Two turnovers for Fort Lewis and none for Dixie State. So the Trailblazers winning that turnover battle. 123 to go. And a great crowd on hand on first down. Lucero dives up the middle. He'll pick up three yards. It'll be second down and seven. As I look out from the booth, nearly filled the capacity here on the west side with fans making their way over to the east side as well. Will we see perhaps a record crowd here? Jake Lowry running to the left. He's able to slip out of a couple Dixie State tackles and picks up the first down. He'll read option. He slips out of the grasp of Shiloh Pritchard, the linebacker, also able to get past Remington Kelly. And Lowry goes for a first down. Under 40 seconds to play here. Some confusion as the Dixie State defense gets set up. Now they're set. Lowry claps his hands, takes the snap. Pump fake, loads up, lofts it downfield. Receiver there, catch is made. Down across the 30 to the 28-yard line. And that may end the first quarter. The clock will stop momentarily. But a big pickup of 35 yards for Fort Lewis. Clock rolling at 10 seconds. Lowry gives to Lucero, and he's brought down. Nothing going for Lucero, although he does get through. And he'll pick up about four yards on the play, and that will end the first quarter. It's been all Dixie State. That's the end of the first quarter. But Fort Lewis is starting to warm up, knocking on the door of the red zone after 15 minutes of football. Dixie State 10, Fort Lewis nothing. We take a 60-second timeout and come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. 15 minutes up on the second quarter clock. We will have the first quarter stats for you for just in just a minute. Lowry on second down will go read option. He's right near the marker, and they're going to mark him one yard shy. Needed four yards, picked up three on the run. Third down and one from the Dixie State. We'll call it the 18-yard line. Big third down here. In the first quarter, Dixie State goes for 78 yards of total offense. How about this? Fort Lewis outgaining the Trailblazers at the end of the first quarter, 86 to 78 after those touchdown passes since our last check of the stats. On third down and one, Telfi hit at the sticks, and that's right at the marker. Boy, that's close. Fourth down. No gain. Fourth down and one. And it looks like the field goal unit is going to jog out onto the field. Wow, big stand there by the Dixie State defense. It looked like there was a miscommunication in the backfield between Jake Lowry and T.J. Telfi. Telfi almost looked like he went to the wrong side, so it took him a minute for that exchange. This will be a 35-yard field goal for Hogan Kiesler. The snap, the kick is low, and he got it to go. Boy, oh boy, that looked like that was either going to hit the crossbar or fall short, but it sneaks through. We're going to keep it right here. Just had the timeout. 13.26 to go. 
here in the second quarter. Dixie State, a 10-3 lead. I don't know if we have another look at that field goal, but that one just crept over the crossbar as Kiesler able to sneak it in from 35 yards. Dixie State, a 10-3 lead. Let's take a look around some other Dixie State sports. Trailblazers soccer team falling 3-1 to one today to Texas A&M International. Trailblazers finish up their Salt Lake City trip with a 1-1 one one record after a win over Notre Dame de Demure, former Pac West foe, on Friday, excuse me, on Thursday. Women's volleyball wrapping up a two-game trip to South Dakota. A three-set sweep over South Dakota Mines last night. How about this? A 2-0 lead for the Trailblazers after two sets. Check that. 25-23 win for Dixie State in the first set at Black Hill State. They lead it 25-24 in set two. Yellow Jackets fighting hard against this tough Dixie State team. Kiesler gets set to put a foot into this one for Fort Lewis. That field goal. Capping a seven-play, 62-yard drive. Kiesler, end-over-end kick. Will be fielded by Aaron Simpson at the five, across the 10, angling to the middle of the field, across the 20, to the 25. And that's where Dixie State will start at the 26-yard line. Dixie State leading it 10-3 with 13-21 to go. Here in quarter number two. Take a quick look at what's ahead for Dixie State after this game. This is a three-game homestand for the Trailblazers. And we'll have two more home games after this one. Darms on first down, swings it out to Xavier Smith. Makes the catch. For four yards to the 29-yard line. 13 at 15 to go in the second. So next week, Dixie State will host New Mexico Highlands. A week after that, South Dakota Mines will make the trip here to Trailblazer Stadium, and that will wrap up the three-game homestand. Darms, quarterback keeper, dives forward for two yards to the 31-yard line, and it'll be third down and four. It looked like... Darms had the option to hand off to Xavier Smith in motion. Kind of held on to it for a moment. Then decided to go. Picks up two yards. Clock rolling, 12.30 to go. For Dixie State, you want to move the chains at least a time or two on this drive. With Fort Lewis starting to figure some things out offensively. Trips to the near side, empty on the far side. Darms, shotgun snap. Has plenty of time. Fires across the middle. And it's incomplete. Nate... See me, Cody Hobbs looked like he was hit before the ball got to him. Of course, that's light, right at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if maybe the bang bang play as we see the look at the replay. Ethan Williams in on coverage. Coach McClure felt like he was hit before the ball got there. Either way, he'll end up as a punt. For Josh Carlson, Mason Hatton standing in his own 30 to field this one. Carlson will have freedom to just boom this one. Gets it away. Pressure was coming. Hatton backs up, makes the catch at the 28. Gets a block. And then taken down on the far side. Whistles after the play. Be some extracurriculars. Going on, tackle made by Lionel Masivi on the punt. Referees getting together. I don't see any flags down on the field. Referees are having a discussion. Oh, there is a flag near the 50-yard line. 12.04 to go in the second quarter. Dixie State a 10-3 lead. Jeff Reed, our referee, gets ready to tell us what's going on. Personal foul, unnecessary ref, this number 47. 15-yard penalty, first down. And that penalty will go against Fort Lewis. And that's Darian Stickney 
Six foot two junior linebacker. Called for unnecessary roughness. I did not see where that occurred, but somewhere near the 50 yard line. And that will back Fort Lewis up inside its own 20 down to the 18 yard line. And that is now where the Skyhawks will take over on a first down. Lowry bobbles it, will lob it up. Jalen Moore there in coverage, and the catch is not made, but a flag flies. It'll be pass interference against Jalen Moore. Tejon Mondi Smith, the intended receiver. 15 yard penalty on my first down. Jalen Moore in on coverage. We get another look at it. Yeah. Right toward the end, he may get a little too much there on the left arm of Monty Smith because Moore and Tejon Monty Smith are kind of slapping at each other all the way down, and then perhaps Jalen Moore turned it into more of a one-sided affair. Right toward the end, ball moved out to the 33. And off to T.J. Telfin, he goes nowhere. Dixie State has this run game solved. He'll lose a yard. Second down and 11 from the 32. Lysene Sewell on the tackle. Second down and 11 from the 32-yard line. 11.25 to go in the second. Low snap. Lowry picks it off the ground. Hit his, The ball comes picked off. Shiloh Pritchard, his second pick of the year. 35-30. And he's... Rumbles to the 25-yard line and is brought down by Sam Colbert, the tight end. Lowry picked up the low snap, felt pressure coming, had to get rid of it, floated across the middle. And Shiloh Pritchard with the Intermountain Healthcare interception, his second interception in as many weeks, had a pick six last week. Third turnover of the game for this Dixie State defense. Shiloh Pritchard missed all of last year with injury. And he has been big for this Dixie State defense so far this season. First down and 10 for the Trailblazers at the Skyhawk 26-yard line. Snap to Darms. The late handoff to CJ, and he's met in the backfield. He goes nowhere. Mayberry and Takameatu in on the tackle for Fort Lewis. Clock rolling, 10.55 to go until halftime. Again, flying solo today. We'll be joined by NC State alum and my co-host on our Trailblazer Weekly show, Drayson Ball, the remainder of the season. Sajay, end around the right side, had room, looked like he might have run into his own guy. He'll pick up about six yards on the play. Fort Lewis, Christopher Blanton's going to have to leave the game. His helmet popped off. So he'll have to leave the game for one play. It'll be third down and seven from the Skyhawk 23-yard line. You really like to capitalize on that turnover. Third down and seven from the 23. Darns with two receivers to the far side. Now a man in motion is Brad Duran. Fake the sweep to him. Holding. Hit as he throws across the middle. And he was looking for the screen pass to say Jay Luongo. Luongo was hit by the Fort Lewis defender. He didn't like it at the end of the play. So say Jay had some words for him. That was Donnell Pleasant the third. It was kind of a dangerous hit because that was a helmet-to-helmet hit. If you ask me, that should be targeting. I know the play's over, but Donnell Pleasant the third should almost be out of the game for that hit. He went down and he hit say Jay Luongo right in the helmet. And he ducked his head on purpose. There's no room for that. I don't like that one bit. This is going to be a 40-yard field goal right hash for A.J. Jurgensen. This would match a career high for Jurgi. The snap, the kick, and it's no good. Short and wide and left. Dixie State, after the interception, comes up empty. 10-10 to go. Clock stopped. And Fort Lewis going to get the ball back. We're going to take another look at that play. Overthrown, and the play's over. And Donnell Pleasant III again lowers the helmet. There's no reason for that. Say has some words for him. The referee's right there. If you ask me, that should be a flag all day long. 
there's no room for that. Especially for one of the, their team's key player. I just don't like it. But water under the bridge at this point, I suppose. Fort Lewis will jog back out onto the field. Lowry with Braden Lucero behind him. Pistol formation. He'll load up. Fires across the middle. Has Tejon Monty Smith incomplete just out of the outstretched arms across the 50 to the 45-yard line, but incomplete. Jalen Moore and Mike Jones in coverage downfield. Get a good look at Donnell Pleasant the third there on the far side. Big shout-out to our CEC TV crew. Dave Harris is down in the van today. Lauren Golden, Marcus Farnsworth, James Farnsworth. Don't know all the students' names, right? Name them all by name as well. Lucero on second down. will pick up four yards. It'll be third down and six at the 27-yard line. For those of you watching, Dixie State fans and Fort Lewis fans alike, as you see Lucero, on that run, and now a Fort Lewis player slow getting up. Game clock operator, please set the game clock to nine minutes, 51 seconds. And that's Marcelino Carrillo down near the 20 yard line. Thank you. As you see right there, may have a Dixie State defender land on that left leg. We won't speculate as to what is wrong with it. That does not look like it feels good while the trainers attend to him. I want to continue to let you know, for all of you watching, and we're so lucky here at Dixie State to have CEC TV, a name Dave and Lauren and Marcus and James. I don't know all the students' names that we have, or I would uh, give them credit here on the air. This is a very, you know, probably what you're seeing right now is between well, 90 and 95% student produced. We've got Dave helping direct back in the in the studio. We've got students running, or back in the truck. We've got students running replay, students on cameras. These are the kind of opportunities that you get here at Dixie State University. On-hand experience, hands-on experience with cameras. Behind the scenes, you name it. Good to see Carrillo up walking off under his own power. But our students do a heck of a job here at Dixie State University helping produce these broadcasts. And what we like to think is some of the best live game video production in all of Division II. Even better than some of Division I as well. We are definitely lucky to have the good folks at CEC TV on our side. Here we go. Third down and six. Carrillo up off the field, and he was off under his own power, so that is good. I don't care what color the jersey is. You never want to hear any, see anybody hurt. Third down and six coming. Play clock at 14. Flags fly and a false start. False start. 73. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. It's Joseph Townsell. You're going to see him kind of flinch just a little bit as you had kind of step back there. Couldn't hold his balance. Dixie State was doing some different things on the defensive line. And Townsell, the left tackle. Just couldn't keep his balance. 9.25 to go in the second. Crucial third down play. A lot more in the playbook for third down and six than for third down and 11. Option play out to the right side. Lucero, Reinhardt in the area. And the tackle is made. Nowhere to go for Braden Lucero. Abraham Reinhardt was there. Trayvon Watson was there coming up from the safety position as well. You see Reinhardt coming to your picture and then Watson from the safety position as well. And the stop is made with 8.50 to go in the second. Boy, Dixie State defensive coordinator, Willie Mack Garza, he loves to bring those safeties up. He loves to blitz. And it's showing there. Aaron Simpson back to field this Max Peets punt. Peets gets it away. A good kick. Simpson backs up to his own 34. Feels the punt, feeling his way around the right end, across the 40, spins back to the 45, still on his feet, 
and he's tackled from behind, flagged down at the Dixie State 42-yard line, so a lot of running. Fort Lewis was asking for a flag early in that return. It did not come, and then it came later. During the return, block in the back on the return team, number 24, 10-yard penalty, first down. The block in the back against Dixie State on the return. I thought I heard him call out number 24 on that penalty, but it was 24 on the return. 8.22 to go. Dixie State will start the next drive. And on first down, Easton Smith is in at quarterback. They're going to try Easton. And he hits a quarterback keeper one yard. The 31 to the 32 yard line. Easton Smith, the sophomore out of Payson, Utah, is in at quarterback. They've split time between he and Trent Darms. It's that close of a battle. In fall camp, delayed handoff. Lawrence Starks will go for six yards, and it'll be third down and four. Excuse me, three upcoming from the 39-yard line. Third down, three. Smith, the sophomore out of pace in Utah. Empty backfield, five receivers set, three to the far side, two to the near side. Shotgun snap to Smith. Pass across the middle is complete. All in, center of the field by Connor Miller, and that will go for a first down and then some. Dixie State moves the chains. Great throw by Easton Smith. Put the ball up there where Connor could get to it, and Miller hauls it in his second catch of the day. And the first down for the Trailblazers. Read option. Smith's going to keep it across the 50. He's got some wheels on him. Across the 40, 45, 30. Banged out of bounds across the 30. Down to the 28-yard line. 24-yard pickup for Easton Smith. And they're going to hurry up back to the line from the 28. XC State offense is moving. Timeout. Fort Lewis. Fort Lewis going to take the half. a timeout. 6.42 to go in the second. We will step away. Let's take a 30-second timeout. Dixie State 10, Fort Lewis 3, back in 30 on the Trailblazer Football Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Good look at the Trailblazer band. Dixie State, a 10-3 lead with 6.42 to go in the second. The Trailblazers trying to add to this. Current drive, four plays, 40 yards. Drive summary. Easton Smith came in. Play quarterback, no gain on his first rush. Lawrence Starks and went for seven yards. And for the first down, Easton Smith across the middle to Connor Miller for a nine-yard pickup. And Easton Smith, 24-yard run on the read, read option run. And out to Sajic on a first down. They'll get him a three-yard pickup. Referee still had his microphone on. You could hear that. Whistle's blowing. Hear him run in and say, hey, we're done. Let him go. That's been something that I have been clamoring for as a, as a football fan, of, you know, an announcer, just in general. They let that, they feel like they let that go way too long sometimes and can lead to injury. Second down. Miscommunication between Sage and Easton Smith, and he's going to lose a yard. Third down and eight forthcoming. In fact, now they're going to move back up, say no gain. Third down and seven for the Trailblazers. Smith and the Longo just not on the same page. Smith expecting him to go to the left to to the right side. And Sage went to the left. And eight, looking. He's going to roll out to the left. This one's coming back. Pass complete. First down yardage to Dewan Dantzler, far sideline. But it's coming back, holding flag back at the 34-yard line. Here comes the call from Jeff Reed. 58. Offense. 10-yard penalty. Still fourth down. That penalty. You're going to go against Brandon Turner. 
the left tackle. Now it's fourth down and 18. And I think maybe now you bring Carlson out onto the field and let him punt away. Still offense on the field, unless they're going to take another one of those delay of game penalties to try to give Carlson a couple more yards. But fourth down and 18 from the 36. Dixie State indeed going to keep the offense on the field. Play clock at 3, 2, 1. And here's the snap. Smith loads up, fires near sideline, and Dantzler couldn't make the catch. Looked like there was contact. He can't believe it. Incomplete. Ball will go back to Fort Lewis. Turnover on downs. Smith put the ball in a pretty good spot. There was definitely contact. Dantzler holding his hands out as Cam Theory had both hands right in Dantzler's back. No flags fly. Fort Lewis will get the ball back with 4.54 to go. Here in the second quarter. It's a game that in some ways has felt like Dixie State has kind of controlled things. And yet, with just under five minutes to go until the break, it's just a one-touchdown game. Lowry backpedaling. Pressure comes. He's going to have to run. Fires back center of the field. Hatton there, and he can't get to it. He was covered by Trayvon Watson, safety. Dixie State coach is unhappy with something. Not sure if they were asking for a hold there or what. You get a good look at head coach Shane McClure. Third year here at Dixie State. Really trying to build a culture. A winning tradition here at Dixie State. Done a great job for his first two seasons as head coach. And off to... The tailback, T.J. Telfy, trying to get the left corner. He'll pick up two yards, but that is as far as he will get. And is forced out of bounds on the near sideline. 4.43 to go until halftime. Third down, and we'll call it nine forthcoming. Mind you, the halftime show coming up. We'll give you the first half stats, first half highlights. Break it down. We'll also take a look around the RMAC and let you know what's going on around the conference. 4.42 to go. Snap to Lowry. Pressure comes. We'll load up. Fire deep downfield. Man is there, and it's tipped. Incomplete. Jalen Moore, Alex Lilliard, and Mike Jones all in the area. And that pass is incomplete. Lowry probably lucky that pass wasn't picked off. It'll be a punt. Max Peets with 4.33 to go. Aaron Simpson at his own 15. Punt away. Good punt. Simpson calls for the fair catch. The 20 nearly dropped it. Falls ahead to the 21-yard line. 4.25 to go until halftime. Take a look. Out into the stands, and this is a packed house. In fact, it would look like almost a sellout if it was still just the the east side. We're going to get a good look at it here. Great crowd on hand here for this home opener, nearly completely filled on the east side. On first down, Sage Luongo off to the right end. And he'll pick up one yard, second down and nine, 415 and ticking until halftime. Or Lewis has done a really good job of containing CJ at this point. He's had one run where he's really been able to break it out. Nine carries for 36 yards. Smith fires. Pass caught. Brad Durant makes the catch. Makes a man miss. 35 near the 40. And Dixie State moves the chains. Good to see Brad Duran making a catch, making a guy a miss, picking up the first down for the Trailblazers. Here's a guy that redshirted his freshman year and came back this year for his fifth year here at Dixie State, graduated in the spring, and he's back in more classes. Play his fourth year of football. Easton Smith is going to go down. Nowhere to go. He's sacked back to the 31-yard line. He'll lose seven yards on the play. 
Back to Brad Durant. He's one of those guys that just talked to Coach McClure, and he's one of those guys that you just love to coach because he will do anything for you. He's a receiver you love as a quarterback. He'll put an extra time with you. Catch pretty much anything thrown his way. Just an overall good guy. Smith going to the sideline. Connor Miller making the catch on second down and 16. And he'll make his way out to the 44-yard line. How about a pickup of... 12 needed 16 picked up 12 so it'll be third down and four much more manageable than 16 yards they're going to say officially third down and five now 225 to go trips to the far side for easton smith lauren starks in with smith quick fire catch made by devin osborne the six foot seven sophomore a slant route inside. He makes the catch and then gets some yards after the catch. And he's into Fort Lewis territory to the 44-yard line. 15-yard pickup from Easton Smith to Devin Osborne. Dixie State putting something together here. Two minutes remaining here in the first, and a timeout going to be taken by Fort Lewis. Timeout. Fort Lewis. That's their second charge to the half. 158 to go until halftime. Dixie State 10, Fort Lewis 3. Let's take a 30-second timeout and come right back for the conclusion of the first half of the Trailblazer Football Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back inside the broadcast. A great look at the Dixie State campus. Jeffrey R. Holland building is that big building you see there. The house is the library, among many other things. There's the Stampede student section. How strong for this first home football game of the season. They were given some T-shirts, as you can see those there. We were also given out Chartway Federal Dixie State T-shirts as well for the red out tonight. The Chartway and the snap gets past Easton Smith, and he'll fall on it. Across the 50. That's going to be a big loss. Not sure how that happened, but it just got past Easton Smith. He took his eyes off the ball. They will roll back across the 50 to the 44-yard line, or the 46, excuse me, is where that ball is going to be placed. It'll be second down. And as some like to say about city block, second down and 23. 120 to go until halftime. We'll see how much that changes how aggressive this Dixie State offense wants to be before the break. Smith loads up. He wants it all. Fires deep downfield. And the catch is made. Inside the 15. Inside the 10. Down to the 5. Giovanni Sanders, the freshman, going up, making the catch in double coverage. How about that? Dixie State in business, answering my question about how aggressive they wanted to be before the break. Double coverage, and he's able to turn and make the catch. Coach McClure told me that this is one of those freshmen you need to look out for. And Giovanni Sanders making the longest catch of his collegiate career. Now whistles ring and a timeout taken with 49 timeout. seconds remaining. Fort Lewis. Fort Lewis. That's their last charge timeout of the half. Going to take its final timeout. We'll keep it right here. Easton Smith loads up and puts this one on the money into double coverage. He put it right where Sanders needed to go to turn around and make that catch. Two Fort Lewis defenders, I think they were expecting to see that ball go a little bit further. Sanders was able to turn and see that it was coming in shorter. And he turned and made the catch. What a play. 49-yard hookup from Easton Smith to Giovanni Sanders. And Dixie State in business. Let's give you another look at it. Well, maybe not. Here it is. Look at it from a different angle. As Sanders able to go up for it. Man, what great camera work. Who do we have down there on that camera? That's a great shot. I think that's Dave. I can see through my binoculars correctly. Shout out to Dave for that great shot. 
You've been in the program a couple of years. Great shot. Another shout out to our CEC TV crew. Great staff, great students. 49 seconds remaining until halftime. Dixie State has all three timeouts. Fort Lewis is out of timeouts, and the Trailblazers would love to make this a two-touchdown game before the break. They get the second-half kickoff as well. Smith on first down will toss it to Xavier Smith to the five, diving for the pylon, can't quite get it on the sweep. Now, that technically should go in as a pass, as it was a forward pass to Xavier Smith. 44.7 seconds remaining. Here we go. Second down and goal from the one. Smith, hand off to Lawrence Starks. And Starks will jog it into the end zone for the touchdown. The freshman able to walk into the end zone, and that's his first collegiate touchdown. Congratulations to Lawrence Starks. And he gives Dixie State a 16-3 lead with a PAT pending. 42 seconds remaining. What a drive. Nine plays, 78 yards, 343 off the clock. Trailblazers lead it, 16-3. Snap to Duran. The hold, the kick is up, and it's good. Yergi able to split the uprights in Dixie State, a 17-3 lead, 42 ticks remaining. Again, we'll keep it right here with the full halftime break just around the corner. Dixie State, nine plays, 78 yards, 343 off the clock. And they lead it 17 to three as Lawrence Starks, a great read option play. Easton Smith has the option to hold on to that ball if he wants to, but he can see where all the defense was, leaves it with Starks and Starks into the end zone untouched. Trailblazers lead it 17 to three with 42 seconds remaining. I'm gonna remind you halftime show coming up we'll break down the first half for you give you some more stats brought to you by Neaters. XC State has scored two touchdowns those brought to you by TDS tonight remind you the our inter interceptions brought to you by Intermountain Fabulous Freddy's sponsoring our first downs Red Lion Hotel sponsor of our sacks Jimmy John's their fumble sponsor and we'll hear from won't hear from, but Hungry Howie's helping us out in the postgame. A.J. Jurgensen will tee this one up. Devontae Norman back deep to receive it, standing about his own 10. It will get... He didn't call the fair catch, so he'll field it at the two. He'll have to return it. And Dixie State able to wrap him up and bring him down at about the 16-yard line. You see some of his teammates there were saying, hey, motion for that fair catch, and he just was not able to motion for it soon enough. And an injured Dixie State player on the far sideline. Fort Lewis trainer is going to get to him first. Dixie State trainer Bruno Silva now out onto the field. Kelby Hoffheins joining him. And it's Lionel Masivi, one of the freshmen, and he's able to jog off on his own power now. One of the things you love, it doesn't matter what color your jersey in, jersey is. You get hurt on the Dixie State side. Your Fort Lewis player, those Dixie State trainers will be out as quick as they can to attend to you. Same thing on the Fort Lewis sideline. Everyone helping each other out. I want to give our Intermountain Healthcare trainers a big shout out for all they do. Jake Lowry on a first down with 35 ticks remaining will hand off to Lucero and he's wrapped up and taken down. He goes for a loss of two yards on the play. Timeout. And Dixie That's State's going to take a timeout time with 29 seconds remaining. Interesting. Stop going to be made by Charlie Coca. Transfer from Adams State. Played in the RMAC. Take a look at that Dixie State volleyball match. Life stats haven't updated for quite some time. Let's see if we can get those updated. And it is final. Dixie State sweeps the Yellow Jackets at Black Hill State. 25-23, 26-24, and 25-21. So two three-set sweeps for the Trailblazers in South Dakota. They'll come home with a 7-2 overall record and 2-0 in the RMAC. 
a great crowd here on hand at Trailblazer Stadium. And we'll be anxiously awaiting the announced attendance. I'm eyeballing it here. And there are people everywhere in here. There are people filling up the west side. There are people standing around down on the south end. There's people on the east side. Here we go. Second down and 11. Read option. Lowry's going to keep it. He's brought down. Does Dixie State spin another quick timeout? They do with 23.6 seconds remaining. It'll Time be... Out. Dixie State... We keep it right here. Second timeout of the half for Dixie State. That'll give me time to look up this number I wanted to give you. The single game attendance record here at Trailblazer Stadium for the Division II era. 5,320. That was against Humboldt State back in 2006. And I believe, as I pull it up here, just to make sure, I don't want to say the wrong thing, I believe that was the first game played in this stadium as a member of Division II. Indeed, it was. September 23rd, 2006, AC State fell 48-28 to Humboldt State. That is your single game attendance record. The only time we've seen a crowd of more than 5,000 on hand here at Trailblazer Stadium, I think, until tonight. I think we set a new record just eyeballing it here tonight. I think we probably have over 6,000 here tonight. 23 ticks remaining. Hand off to TJ Telfy. Does he have enough for the first down? No, he doesn't. Stopped at the 20. Timeout taken. Clock rolls down to the 16 seconds. Which McClure may ask for a couple seconds to be put back on this clock. We'll see if they grant him that. Shiloh Pritchard in on the time stop. Out. Dixie State. That's their final time out of the half. Game clock operator. Yep. Please set the game clock to 18 seconds. They are going to put nearly two full seconds back onto this here. 16.2 seconds remaining. Check that, 18 seconds remaining. I just said they're gonna have two seconds and I read the time before he puts two seconds back on there. 18 seconds remaining in the first half. Dixie State a 17 to three lead. But how about that? I like the aggressive approach. You've got all three timeouts left. Why not use them? Defense has been swallowing up the Fort Lewis run game. Fort Lewis didn't want to do anything crazy through the air. They ran it three times. Dixie State able to get three stops. And now you're forcing Max Peets to punt from his own five-yard line once again. And you just, you never know. I mean, you bring the pressure, you know, maybe a bad snap. You never know what could go wrong here. And Dixie State, all right, see what they can do to perhaps put some more points on the board before the break. Aaron Simpson standing in his own 30. Punt is nearly blocked. Not quite, though. End over end kick. And that ball is going to roll down across the 25, down to the 23, and it's down with 5.4 seconds remaining. Aaron Simpson let that ball go. Now Dixie State, I'm sure, is just going to kneel this out. That'll go in the book. It's a 58-yard punt for Max Peets. Easton Smith. We'll bring the troops back out onto the field, but I would be shocked if they do anything besides just kneel on it here to end the first half. Dixie State a two-touchdown lead, and they get the second-half kickoff. Indeed, they will kneel on it. Dixie State, 17-3 lead going into the halftime break. It's been all trailblazers. Here in the first half, they are sitting pretty with a two touchdown lead and they get the first possession of the second half. Great look of Giovanni Sanders walking off the field. He made that great touchdown catch to set up the Lawrence Starks. One yard touchdown run to give Dixie State a 17 to three lead. We are gonna step away on the TV side. Let's take the full five minute timeout. 
We're going to toss it back to Martin in the Radio Dixie 91.3 FM studio. He'll have a halftime report for you inside the studio. And then right before uh, we start the second half, we'll be rejoined on the radio side. We'll take a five-minute timeout on the TV side, and we'll come back with the halftime report. We'll break it all down for you. 17-3, Dixie State lead at the half. We'll be back after this timeout. Thank you, Carrick, for that introduction. Welcome to the Trailblazer Halftime Show here at Radio Dixie 91.3. I am your host, Martin Kelly. Coming up on the Halftime Show, we're going to get you some college football scores from half. We're going to get you some stats from the game so far between the Trailblazers and Jayhawks as the Trailblazers lead 17-3 on that end. And we're going to get a lot more a lot of that. We're going to send it right back to Carrick after that. Stay tuned for more on the Trailblazer Halftime Show. Welcome back to the Trailblazer Halftime Show. Let's get a little scores from the college football halftime. Let's get a little scores from college football today. Washington is beating up North Dakota. Beat them up 45-3. West Virginia winning over Youngstown State 52-17. to UCF in the ranked 19 in the country beat South Carolina State 38 to nothing. Miami all over Savannah State 77 to nothing. About a couple minutes left in that game. And the big game today, Texas A&M versus number two Clemson. Right now, number two Clemson leading 21 to 6. About 4.30 left in the third quarter in that game. 11 ranks LSU is beating up on Southern Eastern Louisiana 24 to nothing. Number one ranked Alabama beat up Arkansas State 57 to 7. Number ranked three, number third ranked Georgia beat up on 24 ranked South Carolina. 41 to 17. Fourth rank Ohio State beat up on Rutgers 52 to 3. And Wisconsin beat up on New Mexico 45 to 14. We're going to send it. Uh, we're going to take a halftime quick break right here. And then we'll bring in Carrick on to the show here. We'll get some more stats and other stuff here on, Reddit, on the Trailblazer halftime show. My name. Let me bring my man Carrick in here if you he can hear me. I don't know if you can hear me, but let's see if Carrick's working. Carrick, can you hear me? No, he cannot. We'll bring him back later into the show. But standing so far, the Trailblazers are winning 17-3 over Fort Lewis so far. The offense is looking good for the college football pl- – college, excuse me, looking good for the Trailblazers so far in the game. They're Again, they're winning uh, 17-3 over Fort Lewis. Right now, Fort Lewis not getting anything on offense or anything like that so far so we'll take it from there we're going to send it back to Carrick in the studio after a couple breaks get ready for you guys for the Trailblazers second half it's back to the action for DSU Athletics brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln we now return you to Dixie State Athletics softball player there with President Williams Taylor Godfrey is the president of the SAC the student athlete advisory committee here at Dixie State and they do very important work uh you know basically a liaison between the student athletes and, and administration and coaches and faculty, and and they do a lot of good work. In fact, uh, Gabby Cabanero, one of our basketball player, women's basketball players who graduated this last year, was not a SAC representative on the national level, and so it's been fun to see uh, our student athletes be able to help with that. It was a great ribbon cutting ceremony, and now we are back. Dixie State leading 17 to three at the half. Let's give you some quick stats brought to you by Neaters. Dixie State. And there was a point early in the second quarter where I, where I was giving you the first quarter stats, and I thought, boy, I did, I did not rec- realize that. In fact, I've got that right here. Uh, the first quarter stats, Fort Lewis, 86 over 78 of Dixie State. How about that? Dixie State holding Fort Lewis to just uh, 11, excuse me, nine yards of total offense in the second quarter. First half stats, Dixie State, 206 yards of total offense, 149 through the air. And 57 on the ground. Fort Lewis, 95 yards of total offense, 49 through the air, 46 on the ground. Dixie State, eight first downs, it is five of Fort Lewis. Uh, Dixie State leading the turnover battle uh, three to nothing. If you count the block punt as a turnover, which I do in my book, you have the block punt, the fumble recovery, and the interception. And uh, Dixie State able to turn that into a couple of scores as well to lead 17 to three time of possession, 15, 33 for Dixie state, 14, 27 for Fort Lewis, Dixie state four of 10 on third down. How about this? Fort Lewis has not converted a third down play so far in this game. Fort Lewis last week converting on 44% of their third downs tonight, not 
able to do that. Uh, individually, Trent Darms, uh, three of nine. And excuse me, that's first quarter stats. Here we go. Now we got the right sheet in front of us. Uh, passing Trent Darms, four for 12 through the air, 45 yards. Easton Smith, six of eight through the air for 104 yards. So that's your total of 206 yards passing there. Sage Luongo, nine carries, 36 yards. Of course, Lawrence Stark. Starks has five carries, 13 yards, but has the touchdown. Trent Darvis has the rushing touchdown as well. Connor Miller, three catches, 51 yards. Brad Duran, two catches, 21 yards. And Giovanni Sanders, of course, the one catch for 49 yards. Defensively, Shiloh Pritchard, five total s- tackles. And then Wes Moyai and Anthony Yarbrough with one sack each. We've got some first-half stats for you. Let's take a look at those as the halftime clock winds down. We'll take a look at the first half highlights. About a couple minutes worth. Dixie State defense was hot right from the start. You see Lowry try to dump it off the Telfy. And then the next play, the punt blocked by Malaki. Malaki able to be recovered and returned back inside. And then a couple plays later, Sajay getting inside the five down to the one. Then Trent Darms on third down, a crucial third down. Quarterback keeper into the end zone for the first Dixie State score of the game. Dixie State, would, after the A.J. Jurgensen PAT, would lead 7 to nothing. Lowry had a few long passes in that first quarter as he finishes the first half with 49 yards passing, hooked up with Mason Hatton there. And then later, the ball would be stripped out of his hands. Yarbrough with the strip. Wes Moyai with the fumble recovery. Jersey numbers 41 and 42. Second turnover of the game. Later, Lowry firing down the middle of the field. Shiloh Pritchard, Dixie State linebacker, getting the interception. Boy, he's having himself a great season so far through a game and a half. Lowry would pitch it out to Braden Lucero. He would go nowhere. Dixie State getting the stop. That defense has been on fire tonight. And how about this play? Easton Smith, right after he checked into the game, read option run. 20-plus yards on that carry, saying it's not just my arm. I can do it with my feet, too, later in the in the quarter. Firing to Brad Duran, making the catch near the 30, making a man miss. Brad Duran, Mr. Reliable. Later in the quarter, how about a 49-yard pass to Giovanni Sanders down inside the five. Sanders, the freshman, making that catch. A little sweep to the right side for Xavier Smith. And then Lawrence Sarks finishing off the drive for the score into the end zone. 15 minutes on the third quarter clock. Let's play football. Fort Lewis will kick it off. And it goes into the end zone. And Xavier Smith going to kneel on it. And that is where, after the ball is brought out to the 25-yard line, Dixie State will take over. So still a fresh 15 minutes on the third quarter clock. Dixie State a 17-3 lead. We welcome you back inside the broadcast. Eric Segment with you. The voice of the Trailblazers in year four. And I am loving it. It's been a fun ride over these last three years and into this fourth year. And I look forward to being here for many more years. High snap. Trent Darm is back in at quarterback. He'll hand off to St. J. Luongo. He'll go nowhere. No gain on the play. East side stand starting to fill in a little bit more now that the sun has dipped down beyond the press box here on the west side. No gain for St. J. Second down and 10. 14.35 to go. Still waiting for St. J. to break one. AJ missed three games last year due to some dings and some injuries. And he would have gone over 1,000 yards last year if it wasn't for that. And he could do that this season. AJ off tackle to the left side. He'll pick up seven yards on the play. Third down and three coming up for the Trailblazers. 14-10 remaining here in quarter number three. Just underway. I want to thank some of our sponsors Neaters, Lonnie Boy's Barbecue, Intermountain Healthcare, Fabulous Freddy's, 
TDS, Red Lion, Jimmy John's, Hungry Howie's, Camping World, Mountain America Credit Union. All proud sponsors of Dixie State Athletics. We appreciate it. Third down and three. Darms in the shotgun. Looking. Slant route inside. Sanders there. Can't make the catch. There was some contact before the ball arrived at the Dixie State sideline. Almost like an Olympic event down there on the sideline. Synchronized. Calling for a flag. All of them kind of waving their hands around. They're not going to get the flag though. Darms puts the ball there, and I don't know. I think that's okay. Kind of a bang-bang play there, Camp Theory. Able to come up with the pass break up there, and I don't think that's a penalty. 13.40 to go. Three and out for Dixie State on the first drive of the first of the second half. Carlson to the sideline. We'll take a Dixie State bounce out inside the 10, inside to the five-yard line. How about that? Josh Carlson will punt that one all the way down to the five. A 64-yard punt for Josh Carlson. 13.28 to go in the third. And it will be a 95-yard field for the Skyhawks. Thirteen twenty-eight to go. 17-3, Dixie State on top. Lowry, first Skyhawks possession of the half. Passes to the outside. Hatton makes the catch. Can't make the man miss, but he'll pick up the 10 yards needed for the first down. Needed 10, got exactly that. One play and a first down for Fort Lewis, and now a Skyhawk player is injured on the far sideline, and I think it's Hatton. Dealt with some dings and some injuries last year as well. Your Fort Lewis, he's one of those guys that you do not want to see injured. Hope everything's okay with Mason Hatton on that far sideline. He'll stand to his feet. Helmet is off. And he'll make his way over to the sideline. Taking a drink of water. Oh, holding the... I think maybe he had a bloody nose. 13.20 to go. Dixie State, 17-3 lead. Just underway here in the second half, if you're just joining us. Blazers went three and out on their first drive of the second half, and now here come the Skyhawks. Read option, Lowry will keep it, didn't fool anybody. No gain. Second down and 10, ball will remain at the 15-yard line for Fort Lewis. 12.46 and rolling here in the third. Dixie State and Fort Lewis trying to battle it out and see which team will go to one and one and which team will fall to 0 and 2. Snap to Lowry. Pressure comes, dumps it off to Lucero out of the backfield, bobbles, makes the catch, and his hit spins out of a tackle, but I believe he's out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. That looked like about a 10 yard pickup, but Lowry. Went so far back with the pressure coming that he gets back just to the original line of scrimmage. No gain. Time for another get live third down. Jump around. Big third down here. They're going to give one yard officially on the dump out to Lucero. Here we go, five receiver set, trips to the near side, shotgun snap to Lowry, third down and nine, pressure comes, and he has to just get rid of it. Shiloh Pritchard's there, Anthony Yarbrough is there, and Lowry has to just get rid of it. Incomplete pass, and a punt coming for Fort Lewis. Dixie State has been so good defensively tonight. Defensive coordinator Willie Mac Garza has things dialed up and dialed in. Eleven fifty to go. Punt on the way from Pete's, and it's going to sail out of bounds near the fifty. Where do they say it went out? They're going to mark it out at the 
40. Now Max Peets, his shortest punt of the night. And it's going to be marked at the Fort Lewis 40-yard line. So Dixie State starting in Fort Lewis territory. Great field position. Easton Smith is going to come out as they trade possessions. Easton Smith, now your quarterback. Sophomore out of pace in Utah and pace in high school. And off to St. Jay around the left end. He'll make his way forward for a pickup of three, second down and seven. Ball down to the 37-yard line, and that is where Dixie State will set up its next play. And in motion was Connor Miller. Say J, the read option fooled everybody except for George Marpong. Marpong said, nope, you're not going any further than three yards. They go right back to Say J. Jumps over to a defender, but he's able to make the shoestring tackle. It'll be a loss of one for the long go, and now a flag flies late. Who is that going against? There were some extracurriculars on the far sideline. Red jersey and a white jersey getting tangled up. Some frustrations boiling over, perhaps. Who are they going to whistle it against? Here comes the call from Jeff Reed. After the play, dead ball, personal foul, number seven. 15-yard penalty. The down will count. Third down. It's going against Dewan Dantzler in Dixie State. That's a killer. Oftentimes, it's the retaliator that gets caught. So we'll see the play here. I think they called the wrong number out. Because Dewan Dantzler, you see on the far side, did nothing. They called number seven, and he did nothing. Called the wrong number out. Second down and forever. Smith flushed out of the pocket, completes it to the 50-yard line, and say Jake tackled from behind near the 45, down to the 45. And it will be third down and 15 for Dixie State from the Fort Lewis 45-yard line. Pressure came. Lorenzo Tanner got in there. Easton Smith had to flush out of the pocket. Found Sage a good pickup, except he had 24 yards to go. And now it's down to 15. Well, now it's fourth down. My apologies. Josh Carlson into punt. I don't know how to count. Goes from three to four. It's not that hard. Carlson will pop it up, and it will be fair caught at the 11-yard line. And that is where Fort Lewis will take over. 10-18 to play in the third. Dixie State and Fort Lewis locked in a battle. Here in Dixie State home opener, the Chartway Classic kickoff. And what a turnout we have today. I mentioned earlier single game attendance record for this stadium as a member of Division II. That's where our records go from. 5,320 people. And the home opener against Humboldt State in 2006. I've got a feeling we break that tonight. And hopefully we continue to fill the stands throughout the year. Read option. Lowry's going to keep it. He's brought down from behind. Did not fool Abraham Reinhardt. The linebacker is there to make the stop. See Reinhardt coming in from the left part of your screen. And he'll bring Lowry down. Loss of one on the play. Second down and 11. Clock rolling. 9.50 to play here in quarter number three. Dixie State will have New Mexico Highlands here next week in game two of a three-game homestand Lowry pressure comes loads up hit as he throws has a man one-on-one -on -one coverage and no the ball squirts out late Tejon Mondi Smith and Mike Jones check that that's Darren Jones the corner on the far side one-on-one -on -one. great coverage he had it and then the ball came out late. Third down and 11. Great shot at Darren Jones there. Jones, sophomore, out of New Orleans, Louisiana. 9.33 to go in the third. Third down and 11. Lowry feels the pressure again. Steps up in the pocket. Fires deep downfield. Has a man. He can't get to it. 
was a couple yards ahead of the attendant receiver, Xavier Thibodeau. And Thibodeau not able to run under that one. Lowry got a pretty good arm here. Evaded a defender, fired downfield, across the 50, down to the 40, but Thibodeau, covered by Darren Jones, could not get under it. Two possessions each for both teams, and a total of four punts. Here in this third quarter, Max Peets punting out of his own end zone. Last time he did, it was blocked by Malaki Malaki. The first quarter, they bring the house again, can't quite get to it. Aaron Simpson fields it and muffs it. Ball is loose. Dixie State will recover it. Simpson back on it. And a Fort Lewis player flies in late. No flag. Dixie State will take over at its own 35-yard line. First and 10, Dixie State. You see Simpson just at the last second kind of took his eyes off the ball looking ahead. When you're a punt returner, sometimes you have to fight that tendency to want to look down the field and where you're going to make the first move before you have the ball. Simpson luckily able to fall back on it. There was another red jersey in the neighborhood. Either way, Dixie State. Back in business at its own 35-yard line, a fresh set of downs. For this offense. It's still Easton Smith. He'll hand off to Lawrence Starks, feeling his way across the 40. The announcer calls C.J. Luongo on the carry, but it's Lawrence Starks. He'll pick up six yards. Second down and four. Again, however you're joining us tonight, whether it's on TV, radio, or Internet, we welcome you inside the broadcast. If you're watching from Durango, Colorado, or wherever you may be watching from, Fort Lewis fan, appreciate you watching. Hope you're enjoying the game tonight. I know I've certainly enjoyed my trips to Durango, Colorado. Everyone was extremely nice when we made our trip out last year. As Dixie State will take a timeout, we'll keep it right here. 8.38 to go. I came back with some fun stories, actually from that uh, trip to Fort Lewis last year to Durango. We pulled into town in Durango on a Friday. 30, 20, Mid 10, to late afternoon. 5, had touchdown, a Isaiah Wooden. All the way to the house. On the reverse. They pulled that one out of the bag. And Isaiah Wooden will score his first collegiate touchdown. Oh, baby. We're going to call that one an RMAC Top 5 nominee. I did not see if they actually did the RMAC Top 5 this week. Didn't look like they did, but we'll nominate that for the NCAA D2 Top 5 plays of the week for sure. Low snap on the PAT. Yergi able to get it out still, and he makes it. 8.26 to go. Dixie State leading at 24-6. Starks takes the handoff, tosses to Wooden on the reverse. Makes the first man miss, grabs the sideline, and you see the breakaway speed. He could go all the way. Touchdown, Trailblazers. Let's take just a 30-second timeout and come right back on the Trailblazer Football Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Welcome back to State Trailblazer Athletics. Stadium. Dixie State leading 24-3, to 8.26 to play in the third quarter. And how about an Isaiah Wooden 59-yard run to the house. Dixie State going to be assessed an unsportsmanlike 15-yard penalty after the run. Tevya Tolutau. Not sure if we saw in replay anything that would show anything that Tevye did. But what a run. 59-yard reverse to the house for Isaiah Wooden and Dixie State starting to pull away here in the third quarter. Jurgensen, after the 15-yard penalty, will be kicking off from his own 20. Norman standing at his own 15. 
Jurgensen will put a foot into it. End over end kick. Will bounce and field it at the 24. And great coverage by Dixie State. Ball comes out late. And Dixie State has recovered it. Is it a live ball? It's not. They're going to whistle it. They're going to blow it dead. Boy, oh boy, if we had replay at Division Two, I think his knee may have been down, but cannot wait to get a look at this one. Here we go. It's Norman, instead of letting it roll out of bounds, picks it up at the 23, is hit, and there's knees down. Knee is down. Left knee went down at the 28-yard line. Good call by the officials. Would have been exciting to see that ball go the other way. Fort Lewis will take over at its own 28-yard line. Lowry lobbing to the sideline. Man there. Catch made. Did he get a foot down? No. He did not. Out of bounds. And a flag in the backfield. This may be a roughing the passer. It's where that flag is sitting. Not sure if we have a replay that stays with the quarterback. Where that flag is sitting, we may have a roughing the passer. After the play, personal foul, number 63, the offense. Personal foul, number two, penalties offset, second down. Number two does not have to sit out one play due to the helmet coming off. It was came off due to foul. So you had Shiloh Pritchard and a Fort Lewis player getting locked up after the play. You see it. Mondi Smith making the catch on the sideline. It wasn't roughing the passer, offsetting personal fouls. Shiloh Pritchard's helmet came off, but as Jeff Reed, our official, explained, he does not have to sit out of play because it came off due to foul. First down, Lowry escapes the pocket, and he's got himself a first down and then some. Needed 10, got 12. He's got the feet to be able to do that. 8.05 remaining here in the third. Clock will stop momentarily while the chain gang moves and now it's rolling again drop back saw nothing and he said i'm not going to wait for the pressure to bear down this time and he took off reinhardt able to chase him down right about the 40 yard line after the 15 yard pickup first down and 10 ball at the 40 blitz coming hand off to telfy and tj telfy will pick up two yards on the play run off to the right second down and eight 735 remaining here in third quarter been a fun night here at Trailblazer Stadium. Dixie State leading it 24 to three. Clock rolling, 7.05, first, no, second down, excuse me. Lowry loads up, has a man downfield, but overthrows him by 10 yards. That'll bring up third down and eight. Lowry had time, but just great coverage downfield and the pressure eventually collapsed. And he had to get rid of it. In case you're wondering, the score bug, which tells you what down, the down and distance, that's actually connected right into the back of our scoreboard here in the press box. So if they've got it wrong on the scoreboard, which they do, it's third down and eight. It will also appear incorrectly on the screen. We apologize for that. Third down and eight. Lowry escapes some pressure. Now he's going to run trips and fell. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Heck, may have lost a couple yards. It's going to be fourth down and 10. Fort Lewis will have to punt the ball away. Anthony Yarbrough in pursuit. Anthony Yarbrough is another one of those freshmen. Demartini was in there as well. So was, so was Charlie Coca. The Yarbrough is one of those freshmen that Coach McClure, before the season, said, watch out, he's explosive. Clock rolling, 6.24 to go. Pete just gets that punt away. Simpson backing up, calls for a fair catch at the five. Maybe could have let that one roll into the end zone, but didn't want to risk it. Dixie State will take over at its own, we'll call it seven yard line, not the five. 6.16 to go. Let's take a look ahead at our Dixie State Athletics calendar. So men's soccer going one and one this weekend with a 
a win over Notre Dame de Namur on Thursday and a loss to Texas A&M International earlier today. Women's Volleyball makes their RMAC debut. They win at South Dakota Mines, 3-0 sweep. Last night in a 3-0 sweep at Black Hill State today. On first down, Smith, pass inside. Pass is complete. I believe that's Xavier Smith. And he's brought down after a pickup of 20 yards on the play, close to 20 yards. It is Xavier Smith. Another fabulous Freddy's first down. Another fabulous first down. Smith able to make the catch. Uh, dangerous for a minute. Held the ball out in front of him after the catch, but able to tuck it in, didn't fumble the ball. Pitch out to the right on first down to Luago. Legs cut out from under him, and he'll dive forward to the 28-yard line to pick up a three for Sage. Fort Lewis player down after the play. Tim Paogafi on the field and hope he's okay. He, ooh. Skyhawk defender flew in, but the way he took out Sejay's leg, Sejay landed right on Peo Goffey's leg. Hope he's okay. We're going to step away. We'll take the break. 30-second timeout on the injury and come right back at the Trailblazer Football Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return to you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back. 539 remaining here in the third quarter. Dixie State a 24-3 to lead. Of course, that lead and how much time in the game kind of takes a back seat when we've got injured players. As Tim Paogafi for Fort Lewis has helped off the field. A couple of teammates. Matt Lorenzo Tanner there on one side. And didn't catch the other number. Now they're going to carry him off the rest of the way. And good applause from the both sides. Hope Goffey is able to be okay. Hate to see people get hurt. My least favorite part about seeing that, but it is about football, but it is part of the game. Second down and seven. Lawrence Stark spun around, and he'll dive forward for four more yards. And I called Stark's name, but that's actually CJ in there. Sorry, CJ. A.J. Luongo, a four-yard pickup. It'll be third down and three. I'm waiting for Sage to just break one here. 5.04 to go. Get that through that first level. He's got that burst, and he can go. Think back at the first play against Central Washington last year. He goes 75 yards to the house. He's got that speed. And in motion from left to right for the Trailblazer. Shotgun snap to Smith. Third down and three. Will fire across the middle, and it's dropped. Oh, boy. Blake Ince, St. George native, Pineview High School grad, redshirted last year. He was the one in motion from left to right. Found his way into the middle of the field, and he just dropped that one, and he'll want to have that one back forever. Keep your head up, Blake. There'll be more opportunities. 4.43 to go. Low snap, Carlson able to handle it, and a booming punt. Will bounce and die at the 10-yard line. What a punt, and it's down at the 10 by the Trailblazers. Josh Carlson, it's exactly why we brought him here. Filling the shoes of Corey Stenz, great punter over the last three years for Dixie State. Fort Lewis has had to deal with poor field position all night long for the most part. Dixie State leading 24 to 3. Next chance we get, we'll give you some updates from around the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. 433 to go. Lowry in the shotgun. We'll hand off to Lucero. Started right up the middle, cut it back to the right. He'll pick up three yards. Not much doing for Braden Lucero. Second down and seven coming. Ball out to the 15-yard line. 
non-conference action for Colorado Mesa. They lead it 21 to four at Eastern New Mexico. Lowry going to take that one around the left end. On second down, and he'll pick up the first down. Read option run, pulls it out away from Lucero. And Jordan Nichols able to chase him down from behind, but not before he gets a good pickup out of the 32-yard line. And the chains move for Fort Lewis, 3.58 to play. You want to see this Dixie State defense finish this great performance off. I know we're still third quarter. This game is far from over. Lowry will lob middle of the field incomplete. And that pass intended for Mason Hatton. Check that. Parker Strayler. It was number two on the coverage, Shiloh Pritchard. Clock stopped at 3.48. Dixie State a 24-3 lead. Late in the third quarter. Eric Segmiller hanging out with you on a college football Saturday. Give you some scores from around the state here when we get a minute as well. Lowry flushed out to his right. Lets it fly, and it doesn't matter. It's picked off. It's coming back. And it's going to go the other way. No one's even trying to make the tackle. And that's returned all the way back to the 10, but it's going to be a first down for Fort Lewis because Jake Lowry took a shot after the throw. That was easy to see. Referee didn't even have Personal to Personal foul, roughing the passer. Number 99, defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. You're going to get the boo birds from the stampede below. Not sure if you can hear those or not, but it's the right call. We'll probably take a look at it here in just a minute. 3.35 to go. And now, unfortunately, a Fort Lewis player down on the far side in the scrum on, on what was a return that you knew was coming back. It's unfortunate. You wonder if maybe, and I guess you have to let the play develop. If you complete the pass, maybe he keeps going. That player is helped up and taken off. I believe that is Jeffrey Brinkley on the far side. Throws made, and that was the previous throw. I don't think that was actually the throw that we just saw. There was no question whether it was a penalty or not, but I said, no, it's not really possible because you have to wait and see if maybe that pass is completed and you could decline the penalty and see what happens. Here we go. Get Martini coming in. Uh, kind of bang, bang, but... Hit him high, and they're trying to protect those quarterbacks. Lowry, pressure comes, and he's going to go down. Sacked by Charlie Coca. The transfer from Adams State. This Dixie State defense has pretty much been camped out in the pocket tonight. And Jake Lowry is saying, boy, can I get a couple of seconds to myself? Back here. 35 remaining. Second down and 11. Lowry, shotgun snap. Fires. The sideline pressure coming again. Had to just get rid of it. Pass was intended for Tejon Mondi Smith. It's incomplete. And Ryan Wilson on the coverage. Third down and 11. Dixie State trying to get the ball back with 2.28 remaining in the third. Colorado Mesa has just extended their lead to 28 to nothing right before halftime at Eastern New Mexico. CSU Pueblo hosting Shadron State tonight. We'll get you that score as soon as we can. Lowry on third down and 11. Going to be flushed out of the pocket. Room to run to the 50, 45, and he's got the first down to the 40. Just shy of the 40 to 38, but enough for the first down. And Jake Lowry, he's an athlete. He's not giving up on anything. He'll pick up the first down. Fort Lewis moves the chains. Two minutes remaining. First down and 10 at the Dixie State of 42. Lucero around the left end. And he'll pick up one yard. Second down and nine. Fourth quarter. 
Number 12, CSU Pueblo with a 34-13 lead over Shadron State. CSU Pueblo, very, very good. Cream of the crop inside the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Dixie State felt like you know, they beat themselves, not entirely, but, you know, missed simple assignments, missed tackles, things that are kind of textbook things. If it had changed, maybe it would have been such a blowout last week. Lowry, out to the left, floats it to the end zone, and it is incomplete. Nobody there. Nearest receiver was Mason Hatton starting, standing at the 15-yard line. Tazon Monty Smith was on the near side of the field. We're almost near the numbers on the left side. Offensive line finally gave him some time. He bought some time with his feet as well. Let that ball fly. I think he was trying to get it to Tejon Mondi Smith. And he just kind of slipped out of his hand. There's a good look at Fort Lewis head coach, Joe Morris, second year head coach. 1-12 to go, third down and nine. Watch for Lowry running here. He'll throw across the middle, complete. Right at the sticks, it's going to be a first down. And Mason Hatton, he's trying to argue, hey, I was not, I never hit the ground. He's brought down by a Dixie State defender. He's trying to say, I landed on the defender, not the ground. We'll get a look at it here. But another third down conversion for Fort Lewis, and the drive continues. Catch is made. Mason Hatton never went down. What a great shot from our CEC TV crew. For all of you Fort Lewis fans throwing stuff at your phone or your TV or computer, whatever you're watching on, I'm right there with you. Mason Hatton was never down on that play. Hard probably to tell in real time. We can run it back and slow it down a little bit. Great shot from our CEC TV crew. First down, Lowry. He's able to escape and fires. Pass is complete. Dixie State fans want to hold. They're not going to get it. And they are upset. So are the coaches, and I am with them. Remington Kelly was mugged in the backfield. 32.6 seconds remaining. They're going to probably go here. We will get a replay here. Right there. It wasn't Kelly. It was Donovan Williams. And that should be a hold all day long, and it was not called. 25 seconds and ticking. Trick play. Hatton fires and that's incomplete they ran a reverse Hatton ended up with it inside the pocket and he threw a pass back to Jake Lowry the quarterback trying to go all Philadelphia Eagles on us and it's incomplete look more like the New England Patriots on that play sorry Patriots fans had to do it 19.8 seconds remaining Dixie State a 24-3 lead the Trailblazers have been really good on a first and second down in this drive, but have not been able to get a third down stop. 19.8 seconds remaining. Low snap, it's loose, and Lowry dives on it. It'll be third down for Fort Lewis. Clock rolling, and that may do it for the third quarter. And now a flag flies late. Goodness gracious, I hope that's not against Dixie State. There were some extracurriculars going on. Things getting chippy. Saw this a couple of years ago with this Dixie State squad. Like I said, I don't know if it's against them yet. But that has been a little bit of a crutch over the last few years. We were better last year. They only had four total penalties last week. So here we go. Here's the call. Hopefully it's not against Dixie State. After the play, we had two penalties. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 20 of the offense. Number three of the defense, those penalties offset, third down. So it goes both ways. Anytime there's kind of a scrum like that, you like to see it go both ways. Third down. You had Reinhardt and Braden Lucero kind of going at it. Barking at each other. They're both called for a penalty. They offset, and that'll do it for the third quarter. Clock hits triple zeros. And we are 15 minutes away from Dixie State getting back in the win column. The Trailblazers lead it 24 to three. Fort Lewis again knocking on the door of the red zone. Third down and 13, forthcoming from the Dixie State 24 yard line. 24 three, Dixie State lead a 60 second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. 
It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. 24-3 lead, but third down and 13. 15 minutes on the fourth quarter clock. Give you some third quarter stats. Stats updated through the third quarter. Brought to you by Dieters here in just a moment. Lowry has time. Now the pocket collapses. Lowry able to evade defenders, and he's going down way back in the backfield, down to the 40-yard line. It's going to be a 17-yard loss. He made one man miss, lost his footing, and then was not able to avoid it eventually. Another Red Lion sack for the Trailblazers. Reinhardt, Williams, who gets it eventually. It's going to be Reinhardt and Sewell in on the sack. 14-25 14-25 remaining. And they're going to go for it. Fourth and 13. No, he's quick punt. Quick kick from Jake Lowry. And that will roll down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. And that's where Dixie State will take over. Thinking about starting a segment during the game. Maybe we'll do it. Maybe we'll try to do it at the start of the fourth quarter every game random stat of the day brought to you by neaters with our stats tonight dixie state last time the trailblazers won the second game of the year three years ago september 10th and a big win over central washington the trailblazers went crazy on the run game in that play this is the last time they've won their second game of the year. CJ takes the handoff on first down. Dive forward for a couple of yards. We'll have second down and eight, 13.55 and rolling. When I say second game, I don't mean their second win of the season, but literally the second game on the schedule. And I called CJ's name. That's Lawrence Starks on the carry. My bad. They look pretty similar. CJ's got... Lawrence by a couple of pounds, but AJ out of the game at this point with a three-score game. Smith fires to the outside and the tight end Cody Hobbs, and it's incomplete. Going to bring up third down and six. You'd hate to give the ball back up this quickly and possibly conceding this much field position. Easton Smith commanding the troops. Ian Trent Darm split time last week and this week, but for most of the second half, it's been Easton Smith. Maybe he's going to be the guy. Easton fires outside. Catch made for the first down just past the sticks. I believe that's DeWan Dantzler. Indeed it is. DeWan Dantzler making the catch for another fabulous Freddy's first down. Makes the catch with Cam Theory draped all over him. Theory did all he could to try to break that pass up. Dantzler able to make the catch. Dixie State some breathing room. And the clock continues to roll. First down and 10. Ball at the Dixie State 22. High snap. Smith brings it down. Hands out to Stark. Starts around the left end. Cuts it back inside. Spinning across the 25. Diving toward the 30. And where do they mark the knee down at the 29? It's seven yard pickup for Lawrence Starks. That play was designed to go around the left end, but he saw the pressure there and was able to cut it back inside and was eventually brought down by Darian Stickney. Well, 30 remaining in the fourth. Snap to Smith. Smith going to roll out. Now he's just going to run. Smith will have the first down right at the sticks, reaches for it. Needed four, got four. First down and 10 for the Trailblazers. Chains will move. C State, the more breathing room. Across the 30 to the 32 yard line. First down and 10. Clock rolling again after the chains move. Fabulous Freddy's first down. And Dixie State, 24 to 3 lead. Snap to Smith. Slant route inside. Caught by the tight end. Hobbs tries to duck inside of the tackler. Gets maybe two more yards out of the play. We'll give him, let's call it 
five yards. I'll call it four yards. Long four. Second down and six remaining. Across the 40 to the, about the 42-yard line. Not quite to the 42. Check that. 37-yard line. All those lines out in the field. Get confused sometimes. 11.28 to play. Read options. Smith going to keep it. Looked like he was going to be stopped in the backfield. And now he's hit. And out of bounds, he's hit. Dixie State sideline calling for the penalty, and they're going to get it. Fort Lewis defender trying to argue that Smith wasn't quite out of bounds. And now you've got a Fort Lewis defender with his arm around the official. After the play, personal foul, late hit, out of bounds. Number five, 15-yard penalty, on my first down. Dre Cortez coming up to make that hit. And it was close. We're going to get a look at it here. Good stiff arm by Smith to even get away. And it's close. I think it's close enough that you make the call, especially because you have a quarterback giving himself up on the sideline. He's basically saying, you know, I'm done. I'm stepping out of bounds. He's got a foot out of bounds. You got to stop the momentum at that point. Play action. Smith going to have to just get rid of it. Flag flies on the near side, sitting at the 43-yard line. Took Fort Lewis a minute to realize that that had been play action. Once they did, pressure got in, and Smith had to just dump it to the far sideline. Now a flag sitting on the near sideline, about the 43-yard line. Here's the call. An eligible receiver downfield, number 59 of the offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Dane Hall, freshman out of Mililani, Hawaii, getting caught downfield. Ineligible receiver. Dixie State will have first down and 15. Ball back across the 50 at the 48-yard line. Box stop, 10-57. 24-3, Dixie State lead. Hand out to St. Jay. Like he was going to go to the outside, and he bounced it back inside. and He'll pick up one yard on the play. It'll be second down and 14, down to the 49-yard line. Dixie State will have two more home games after this before they head out on the road for a two-game road trip. New Mexico Highlands here next week. South Dakota Mines in two weeks. Fort Lewis, on the other hand, continues a two-game road trip next week. And up to Shadron, Nebraska to take on the Eagles of Shadron State College. Shadron State put in a brand new turf field over the offseason. Extensive remodels on the home side, the, the grandstand, Time the out. press box. Dixie, Dixie State. State will take a timeout. Second of the half. 10-10 remaining. Let's step away. We'll take a 30-second timeout. Trailblazers lead it 24-3 with 10-10 to go on the fourth. 30-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return to you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back. 10-10 to go. Here at quarter number four, Dixie State never did get you those third quarter stats. They've changed a lot since then. But through three quarters, Dixie State was out gaining Fort Lewis, 313 to 169, including 138 yards on the ground and 175 yards through the air. Dixie State, four of 12 on third downs. Fort Lewis, two of 13. And some of those have just come in the last 10 minutes of game time. Second down and 14 at the Dixie State of 49. Smith, plenty of time to throw, will step up. Fires deep to the end zone, has Xavier Smith, and he can't quite run under it and make the catch. Had to kind of slow down and look over his shoulder. Couldn't quite get it. Again, maybe if that's six foot seven target Devin Osborne, he can go up and maybe try to make that catch. Reach those long arms out. But Xavier Smith, 5'10", not able to run under that one. He's got good speed and a good throw by Smith, by 
Easton Smith, the quarterback. Smith throwing to Smith there. But Easton wanted to put it somewhere where only his guy could get it. They'll reset and do it again. Third down and 14. Fires, and it's caught. Pass is snared, and he evades the defender. 10, 5, diving for the pylon. Touchdown, Trailblazers. And that's Xavier Smith just mentioned his speed before that. He's able to make the snag and goes all the way down the sideline for a touchdown. Now some discussion on the far side. There is a flag down. I think it is going against Dixie State. Referees having a discussion with Fort Lewis. Maybe not. They're walking the ball. And the kicking team is coming onto the field. Maybe the referee, I thought he was going to ask Fort Lewis what they wanted to do. Here we go. Let's get the exp explanation from Jeff Reed. I can surmise all I want, but wireless microphone is a thing of beauty. We can get you the call right from the field. Here we go, Jeff Reed. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 53. That penalty and fest on the kickoff. That's 53's first unsportsmanlike conduct. And after the play, a deep jowny. Offensive lineman of St. George, Utah, Desert Hills. He's going to get dinged for the penalty. Now whistles. Coach McClure asking if the penalty can be enforced on the extra point. Or now another flag thrown. And long snapper Dylan Douglas is out on the field, and he's... He's making the call for the official. He's convinced, just judging by his motions, that this is going to be unsportsmanlike against Fort Lewis. Good shot of Coach McClure for our TV viewers. He's a little confused about what's going on. <laughs> Dylan Douglas, a long snapper, Snell out there. Now he's walked back to his spot in the middle of the offensive line. Try to have some fun out there. As it stands, it's 30-3. to Dixie stayed up. Big in the fourth quarter, 9.50 to go. <clears throat> You've got four officials deliberating. Here we go. Once again, explanation from Jeffrey. Oh, now they're going to come over and talk to Coach McClure first. So here we go. Unsportsmanlike conduct number 92, Fort Lewis. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. Those penalties will offset. There you go. You had an unsportsmanlike against Dixie State after the play. Then when they got him, that was to be enforced on the kickoff. Then when they got everybody lined up to kick the extra point, unsportsmanlike against Fort Lewis, and they offset. We have a regular kickoff. A.J. Jurgensen will line up for the PAT, and it's good. A.J. Jurgensen knocks another PAT through the uprights, and Dixie State leads it 31-3. Xavier Smith going up high, making a man miss, and he gets the sideline, diving for the pylon as Drake Cortez was draped around him. Touchdown, Trailblazers. 60-second timeout and back on the Trailblazer Football Network. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to Trailblazer Stadium. Trailblazers leading at 31 to 3, 950 remaining. In the fourth quarter, Jurgensen puts a foot into it. New kick returner. Ball is fielded at the seven yard line across the 20. And he's hit, bounced off a tackler. And then he's hit by the second level and brought down near the 25 yard line. That is Ethan Williams back there returning kicks instead of Javante Norman. And he is brought down that last scoring drive for Dixie State. 10 plays, 91 yards, 414 off the clock. And now you're looking at it. And Easton Smith starting to have himself quite the nice game at quarterback. 10 of 15, 187 yards, touchdown. Trailblazers, a 31-3 lead. 
Whistles before the play on a first down. Delay of game, number 10 offense. Five-year penalty, first down. Delay of game against Fort Lewis. Now on first down, Lowry throws it behind Mason Hatton, and he can't believe it. He had open real estate in front of him if he's able to make that catch. But Lowry, again, with the pressure bearing down on him, has to just get rid of it. If Lowry can make that catch in stride, he can cut it back up inside, and who knows how far it goes. As it stands, second down and 15 from the 19. Lowry grabs his, claps his hands, excuse me, for the ball, offs it to the outside. It'll be a five-yard pickup back to the original line of scrimmage. Mason Hatton making the catch. And now we've got an injured trailblazer on the far side. And that doesn't look good. That's trailblazer defender. And a grabbing at a knee. I think that might be Bryce Willette, the linebacker. And on that far sideline, injury bug has been ever present through fall camp through these first couple of weeks for Dixie State this is the nature of the sport hope he's okay the way he's kind of writhing over there that did not look good let's take a 30 second injury timeout and come right back with 923 to play in the fourth quarter Dixie State 31 Fort Lewis 3 30 second injury timeout and right back on the Trailblazer Football Network it's back to the action for DSU Athletics brought to you by Ken Garf St. George Ford Lincoln we now return you to Dixie Welcome State Athletics. To Trailblazer Stadium, as you see, hard to see what may have happened. Made that tackle and just got the leg twisted. Maybe what is it was Bryce Willette. He was helped off the field, but was not able to put any pressure on that right foot and right leg. And I think they're going to take him just right back to the training room. Second, no, third down. Short pass across the middle, tipped and intercepted by Shiloh Pritchard. But it's going to come back on yet another roughing the passer penalty. Shiloh Pritchard in position, tipped, and it would have been his second pick of the night. But Jake Lowry took a big hit after the play. And the interception's going to be wiped off the board. I think it might be Abraham Reinhardt on the penalty, judging by the interactions between he and Pritchard. We'll wait from the, for the call, and we can take a look at the play if we've got it while we're waiting. And here comes the call now. Personal foul, roughing the passer with targeting oh, number goodness. three. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Number three has been disqualified. Oh, boy. Now that's exactly the right call. That was just at the end of our screen there. And I think he may have to miss the first week against New Mexico Highlands now. I'd love to run that replay one more time, see if we can get a look at it again. There's Abraham Reinhardt. Had himself a good game, but that was absolutely the right call. Just did not get the head low enough. As you see him come through, he leads with the head, helmet to helmet. That's textbook. A good call by the officials. On first down, Lucero around the left end. He'll go for five yards and is stopped at the 45 yard line. So Abraham Reinhardt will miss the rest of this game and the first half against New Mexico Highlands. That's a starting linebacker you'll be without in the first half next week against Highlands. And they can go back and they can look at those, but there's absolutely nothing to look at. And you can't fault the effort just with the rule it it is the way it is now you got to be careful second down and five hand off to lucero he's hit driven back gets one yard on the play before he's driven back third down and four from the 46. so you just lost jordan nichols to an injury you lose abraham reinhardt to a targeting Roughing the passer call. 
Might be getting kind of thin at linebacker. Out there right now, Shiloh Pritchard, Alex Lilliard, and Jordan Nichols. Very experienced linebacker core out there. 7.35 to go, third and four. Pressure comes, and Lowry's going to go down a sack. The ball may have come out late. There seems to be a scrum in there. And whistles. And an injured player. Dixie State player. Goodness gracious. Love the effort. You can see people diving on the pile. That's just the problem with diving onto the pile the way players do sometimes. 7.17 to go. Dixie State leading 31-3. to Both teams have seen a couple of different players have to leave due to injury. And, I mean, Dixie State wishes it could just get this last 7.17 off the clock. Let's see if we can see perhaps who it was. Dixie State may have gotten away with a small face mask. And nothing, nothing much in that. Let's do this. Another injury timeout. Don't want to just have to sit there and look at the injured player. 7.17 to go. Dixie State leading at 31-3. to 30-second injury timeout and back to Trailblazer Stadium after this. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back. Injured player was Augustus Frazier. Freshman linebacker who was in because of some of the injuries and the ejection at linebacker for Dixie State. He gets hurt. Good news is he's able to get up and walk off under his own power. He seems to be okay. Very promising future in that young man's future at linebacker. Pete gets this punt away and it will bounce and take a Dixie State roll back near the 30 yard line. And now Dixie State player and a Fort Lewis player tied up after the play, and that's Trayvon Watson. Trayvon Watson, no doubt, coming in to try to block the punt. And I believe it was number 69, Griffin Stacy for Fort Lewis, who was part of the wall to protect the punter. And they get into it after the play. There's two flags on the ground. So if you're Dixie State, you got to be able to just walk away from some of this chippiness. You have a 31 to 3 lead. You've got to be able to walk away from it. You can't afford to do anything that might result in an ejection and missing a game. And you've got to be smart. like conduct number 13, Dixie State. 15 yard penalty, first down. Oh, well, they're not going to go double penalty. It's going to be all against Trayvon Watson. Coach McClure wants an explanation. Don't go. Don't believe me, just watch. Coach McClure not happy with the official, and the official letting him have it right back on the near sideline. We're going to get a look at it. Oh, it goes out of frame. We won't be able to see it there. Don't believe me, just watch. Coach McClure not happy, wanted an explanation. You catch the very tail end of it as they were kind of going at it. Not sure what he did. Whatever Coach McClure said to Jeff Reed, the official, the official was not happy. Had to be pulled away by his fellow referee. On a first down handoff. And a stop in the backfield. Lawrence Starks not able to go anywhere. In fact, loses two yards. Lawrence Starks, ball carrier, brought down by number seven, Lorenzo Hammond. 6.35 and ticking here in the fourth quarter. This kind of chippy game where everyone's going back and forth. It's 31-3 game. You almost wish you could just say, all right, that's that's it. I mean, nothing, nothing good comes from the chippiness and, and the things that, that may result from that. 6.13 to go. Hand off Starks. Hole across the middle. 20, 25, 30. Gets a block. 40, 50. 40, 35, 30, big run for Lawrence Starks from the 12-yard line all the way down 
to the Fort Lewis. Where are they going to mark him? They're going to put the ball down at the 30, the 28 yard line. And that results in a 60 yard pickup. Timeout. A timeout. Fort Lewis. It'll be taken first of the by half. Fort Lewis. 5.46 to play. Dixie State leading at 31 to 3. The Trailblazers break out a big 60 yard run. For Lawrence Starks, he's having, he's having himself a game. Wondered when that would happen. We'll keep it right here during the timeout. Been waiting for the big run, and it finally happened. And it wasn't just end around untouched. It was breaking tackles, yards after contact. I like what I see from this young freshman. Lawrence Starks getting the job done. The freshman at a Fontana, California at Etiwanda High School. Earned all state and all CIF honors, named to the Baseline League first team. Claimed the Baseline League rushing title as a senior last year with 1,580 yards rushing and 19 touchdowns. Also recorded 200 receiving yards and five more touchdowns. Say J. Luongo is a, a, a junior. You're gonna have him this year and one more year. And you've got Lawrence Starks that can get the job done in the backfield as well. 5.46 to play. Snap to Smith. He'll leave it with Starks again, and he'll dive forward across the 25 to the 25. Pick up a three yards. Out of a delay, Starks has the option to see what's open. Waiting for that hole to open. Cuts it back inside. And picks up three yards. Starks on the night. 11 carries for 90 yards and a touchdown. High snap, gives it to Starks again, feeling his way to the left and then crushed back into the middle of the field. And he'll get down to the 20 yard line for a pickup of five. Needed seven, got five. Third down and two. So Starks now with 95 yards rushing. Last time Dixie State got a 100 yard rusher in a game was October 28th last year in the big win over Adams State on homecoming. Sage Luongo had 187 yards. Blake Barney also had 146 yards on the ground in that game. It has been three. This would be the fourth game without four sixteen to play. Dixie State leading is 31 to three. It'll be third down and two for the Trailblazers out of the timeout. Lauren Starks with 95 yards rushing. Easton Smith, 10 of 15 through the air for 187 yards. Trent Darms also completed 5 of 14 passes for 53 yards. They're down and two. Does the drive continue after this play? Play action. Quick pass to the tight end. Hobbs makes the catch. Inside the five, down to the four-yard line, making the three-yard line, Cody Hobbs on the play action. Oh, he's limping after the play. Took a big hit. See if he can just walk it off a little bit. He's going to hobble back to the sideline. Brad Duran into the game. We're going to Silva, the trainer, will help him over. Boy, been rough for Dixie State down the stretch. Hope Cody's okay. Back to the game. First down and goal from the three. Snap. Read option. Smith going to try to beat the defenders of the end zone, and he can't get there. Second down and goal upcoming. They're going to say no gain on the play. Did not fool the Fort Lewis defense with the read option. 335 and ticking here in the fourth. Second down and goal. Snap. He'll give the Starks. And he'll lose a yard. 
Third down and goal, and now a flag. Oh, my goodness. Incredible. And the way it looks, it look, looks like it's going to go against Dixie State. You've got to be able to keep your cool. There are two fouls on the play, one by each team. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 63. Number four, those penalties offset, third down. This is the first UNS for both players. Things getting chippy out there. You see him getting into it at the end of the play. Offensive lineman just trying to have his tailbacks back, if you will. Third down and goal from the three. Empty backfield. Snap to Smith. Will lob to the end zone. Osborne is there. He doesn't know where the ball is. Incomplete. And about fell on his head. D.C. State has not sent the field goal unit out onto the field yet. Fourth and goal from the five, 2.53 to go. D.C. State really going to try to go for this. Or will they send the field goal unit out on the field? They're going to go for it. On fourth and five. Fourth and goal from the five rather than kick a field goal. And now a timeout coming. Fort Lewis is going to call a timeout. Now Dixie State may send the field goal unit back out onto the field. We'll keep it right here. 2.53 to go. Would still be a little bit surprised at the 31-3 lead. You try to keep the offense out onto the field. but Looks like that is probably what's still going to happen. Kicking team has not made its way out onto the field just yet. The 2.53 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Dixie State leading at 31 to three. In Carrick Segmiller with you. Been fun to have you along for the evening. Hope you'll continue to tune in for all the home games throughout the year. A little bit different this year. I'm not traveling with the team this year. Some changes inside the department. Certainly missing, miss being with the team and don't like missing those games. But there's some good things kicking up, cooking up inside the department. And it's good to be at home to help out with stuff. Fourth and goal. They're going to go for it. They'll fire to Osborne again. And this time he makes the catch. Touchdown, Trailblazers, and now a flag at the end of the play again. You've got to be able to keep your head. Flag in the end zone did not come until after the catch, so the touchdown should stand. That may have been more of a we want to get our receiver an opportunity to run that route again. Rick Whitney, please, if you're here, go down to the track. In front of the grandstand, Rick Whitney. Pass interference, offense number 26, walking downfield. 15 yard penalty, fourth down. Oh boy, they're going to call pass interference, offensive pass interference against Connor Miller. But that is not even involved in the play, and it's going to wipe out the touchdown. Pass interference against Connor Miller. Now they're going to kick a field goal. 2.48 remaining. Dixie State leading 31-3. What looked like a touchdown is wiped off the board by offensive pass interference. And the field goal is blocked. And the ball will go out of bounds inside the 10. Crazy. 2.42 remaining in the fourth. Dixie State now on defense. They get inside the five, but cannot score points. Defense, 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 
Interesting to me that an offensive pass interference downfield. As we take another look at the blocked field goal. And I know what the rules say, but I just logic says that if, if a penalty occurs away from the the play, it doesn't have any effect on the play. It shouldn't have any effect on the play, really. First down, Lucera will run up the middle. He'll gain one yard. Gain of a yard, second down, nine. Two oh five and rolling. Now whistles before the play that time around. False start. Sixty three offense. Five air penalty. Second down. Five-yard penalty will move the Skyhawks back. Second down and 13, 142 remaining. They'll hand off. And that's not Braden Lucero in there anymore. That's Masio Love. Clock rolling, 120 to play. No gain for Love. Dixie State look like they're going to win this one. 115 to go. Still some things to shore up. One of them. Can't commit so many penalties. 12 penalties against Dixie State for 200 yards tonight. That is just too many. Love off the left side. He'll pick up three yards. It'll be fourth down and nine with under a minute to go. And that will just about do it. After the game, we're going to toss it back to Martin once more in the night Radio Dixie 91.3 FM studio. He will wrap things up for you from on the radio side, an opportunity to get some of our radio students involved in the broadcast. We appreciate them and their hard work and him getting us on the air on the radio side tonight. On the TV side, we'll take a short timeout. We'll come back, give you some stats, and give you our player and plays of the game. And that looks like, as the play clock runs out. Delay of game, number 10 offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. This is applicable for a 10 second runoff. Game is over. And there you go. That's how the game will end on a delay of game penalty and a 10-second runoff. So Dixie State will win it 31-3. It wasn't pretty sometimes. We saw a combined 18 penalties for 200. And check that. A combined 19 penalties for 255 yards tonight. But Dixie State looks good on defense, looked good on offense. And that is how you bounce back from a week one loss, 31 to three, Dixie State with a 28 point victory. Trailblazers win it. This is Carrick Segmiller bidding you farewell on the radio side. We'll kick it back to Martin. He'll have the post game wrap up for you there. On the TV side, we'll take a three minute timeout. When we come back, it is the post game wrap right to you tonight in part by Hungry Howie's. Dixie State wins at 31 to three. Trailblazers improved one and one overall, one and one in RMAC play, and Fort Lewis falls to 0 and two, both overall and in RMAC play. Thank you for listening on the radio side. Back to Martin in the studio. Three minute timeout on the TV side. We're back after this. Thank you, Kerry. We're going to take a little quick break. Timeout. We'll come back with the Trailblazer post game. We're going to have stats live, and we're going to have other scores coming around the RMAC and college football. We're going to have all that on the ha- on the post game show coming up here on Radio Dixie ninety one point three. Muscle. It's back to the action for DSU athletics. Brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. 
We now return to you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to the Trailblazer Post Game Show. Let's get some scores around from the RMAC. South Dakota Mines beat up Western State Colorado University 38-21. to New Mexico Highlands beat up Adams State 65-37. to Wow, two big wins for New Mexico Highlands. Colorado State Pueblo on a roll again, wins again against Chadron State 24 to 13. Colorado Mesa versus Eastern New Mexico State will be will, will be later tomorrow. And we got Colorado School of Mines on top of Black Hill State University 42 to 20. And other scores in college football, Michigan on top of Western Michigan 21 to 3. Auburn on top of Alabama State 63 to 9. Kentucky beat up on 25th ranked. Florida 27 to 16. You 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 see USC, excuse me, and Stanford going at it right now. Stanford on top 17 to 3 with 14 46 left to go in the fourth quarter. And Michigan State and Arizona State just kicked off. They got 345 left to go in the first quarter on that one. We'll take a 30 second timeout here. We'll come back. We got stats and a player of the game from the game between the Trailblazers and the and the Hawk and the Skyhawks. And uh right here on the Trailblazer postgame show. Hi. The ad council. It's back to the action for DSU Athletics, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. We now return you to Dixie State Athletics. Welcome back to the Trailblazer Post Game Show here on Radio Dixie 91.3. Stats from the game today. Uh, obviously, the Trailblazers won 31-3 over the Fort Lewis Jayhawks, taking a f- Taking the Trailblazers, excuse me, to one and one on the year. Rushing yards for the Trailblazers had 218 over Fort Lewis is 77. Receiving yards, Trailblazers had 257 yards in the in the passing game and 87 for Fort Lewis. Individual stats: Eden Smith was 11 for 17, 64 percent of his time he was completing his passes. He had 204 yards through the air and one touchdown. And Lawrence Starks had 99 yards on the ground out of 13 attempts and one touchdown. And the Trailblazers just went all over the place today against Fort Lewis. They took advantage of their weak defense and their weak offense and went all over the place and scored a lot of points and made a good game out of it today. Well, that's going to take the Trailblazers again to 1-1. One and one. Player of the game for the game, obviously, is Ian Smith. He had 11 for 17, 204 yards, and one touchdown. Upcoming schedule for the Trailblazers is going to be against New... Uh, let's see... Here we go. The next game after Fort Lewis, they're going to have New Mexico Highlands home. New Mexico Highlands going 2-0 and on the year and winning tonight. It's going to make it a good matchup. That game will be at 6 o'clock at our house. It will be at the Trailblazer Stadium. That game will be here live on Radio Dixie and CEC Channel 22. So that will be a great game. It's Military Appreciation Day, so come on out and do that one. Again, it says Saturday uh, September 15th, 6 p.m. will be at Trailblazer Stadium live on CEC Channel 22 and Radio Dixie 91.3. That's going to wrap up the Trailblazer Post Game Show here. I am your host, Martin Kelly. Thank you for tuning in to another great game of the Trailblazers. Thank you and have a good night. You've been listening to Dixie State Athletics on Radio Dixie 91.3, brought to you by Ken Garf, St. George Ford Lincoln. For more information on Dixie State Athletics, DixieStateAthletics.com. Thanks for listening to Radio Dixie 91.3.